respected dignitaries and friends from various continents good morning and good afternoon as people from all parts of the globe are assembled here let us first congratulate the technology that made it possible and of course the technicians and today's topic is also is about the fast developing technology artificial intelligence machine learning and related matters the program is jointly organized by center for information and guidance in their cg with headquarters in calicut kerala and exl uk based in uk let me welcome you all to this wonderful and most useful event the program will be inaugurated by the president of cg mr p a abdul salam it follows talk introduction by dr riyas abdullah from exl uk keynote speaker is mr abdul salam kunnamal talking artificial intelligence and machine learning there is a question question answer session after that in addition to mr abdul salam kunnamal mr mujib parambat mr asim shah tachamboy dr siddiq punakal mr namshid hashim Mr. Rubas M. Kuti will also be in the related programs. Let me welcome all the experts, CGNs, and students who are eagerly waiting for the session. Now over to Mr. B. A. Abdul Salam, prospected president of CG, for introductory remarks and inauguration of the program. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Respected moderator of this webinar, Dr. Riyas Abdullah and Dr. Siddiq Ulaikal. By profession, they are doctors, but by passion, they are committed to, they are committed social leaders, so you can say. Yesterday also, in fact, we had a program initiated by them. And again, all the beloved students and their supporting parents my dearest team members of cg career division and fellow cgians first of all i extend a warm welcome to all of you who are assembled here to view a program on artificial intelligence and machine learning looking to your faces probably in this small frame i can see a cheerful and pleasant face in all of you and even i can imagine that all of you are happy and inquisitive to listen mr abdul salam kunome suppose or had it been this event on a covid 19 talk i think the faces would be different it would have been different you are a lip curve you curve should have been ulta and slightly tensed and with some anxiety so we are going through a situation which is of course some anxiety and some sort of fear always we will we will be having but in fact of this situation we can see that there is a brighter side we have to look into the brighter side of this crisis cg stands for showing you the brighter side many a time in our life we have to pass through the tunnels of crisis but the end, at the end of the tunnel there will be a beacon in that light we can see some ladders in fact cg is showing ladders to the students and youth if they climb through ladders of their choice they can be successful in their life so that is exclusively the business of cg business in the sense it is a non profit business cg a ngo a non profit ngo is in the service is in the social 
work for the last 24 years. We are having broadly three types of services. One, the information services, mainly doing through our career division. They are giving career information, course information and all. And again, through our journals. The second one is uh, our intervention services through our projects, our 24 projects. These are all uh, ongoing projects. We are giving certain interventions based on specific goals within a time bound action plan. We are uh, having this program for different segments of students, different segments of uh, institutions. And this also having specific target and specific time period. And the third and most important service is transformation based service. This is to provide an extensive long term support system to students or the beneficiaries to transform their life their quality of life or their study habits or what, what sort of goal we are setting. So the transformation focused service is meant for that. Here in this period of COVID downtime, we have shifted to technology again. On fast track, we are moving with the cheese and adapting to the technology and we are conducting a variety of programs to reach out our beneficiaries. Our, this career division conducted a lot of variety programs, and this is one among that. And this tech talk, partnering with the EXL UK, is first in this series. And I congratulate the team of uh, career division for initiating from our side to launch this program. So here, our career division is always looking to outside or they are scanning the emerging trends in the job market all over the world and bringing the various career scope to the students and youth and updating these programs regularly. Even the pre-COVID situation, we used to advocate this, this sort of technologies, especially this advanced technology like artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, etc., which world over people used to describe as the disruptive technology because of its groundbreaking impact. But what happened, we you know, subsequently due to the COVID-19, the disruptive pandemic, the situation has changed. Pre-COVID stage, when we talk about the disruptive technology of AI, we used to say that some of the career is going to be vanished because of this technology-driven situation. Now situation changed due to the pandemic-driven situation. Many of the jobs, irrespective of the segment or sector or technology, it is going to disappear. Now we are in this context, we are discussing the artificial intelligence once again. Probably a lot of concerns, a lot of doubts will be in the minds of the people and students. What will the future of artificial intelligence in this COVID situation or post-COVID situation. We want to listen from Abdul Salam Kunnel about different aspects. What will be the application relevance of AI during the post-COVID situation? Or what will be its relevance? What will be its impact? How it is going to recoup in this crazy situation. This aspects also I hope he will touch upon during his talk. 
then we, we are fortunate to have an expert faculty, expert speaker. Abdul Salam Kunume, who is having over 22 years experience. He is an IT solution architect, and his name, the suffix Kunume means in Malayalam, on the hilltop. So he is on the hilltop of this particular topic, and he's an expert on this. We are looking and want to listen from him. But one thing is sure, we are fortunate or unfortunate to live in an era where we are transferring some of our cognitive skills, like learning, like uh, auto correction to some machines and robots. Why I, say, why I said unfortunately, we are not quite sure about its uh, social impact, probably career impact we can say. Anyhow, if world has invented something new, which is yielding result, so long as it is yielding result, it will continue, and we can hope this will have a great scope in our life. So sitting in the valley, we will listen to Abdul Salam, who remains in the hilltop of this expertise of this particular subject, and we can then decide, I request the students, you can decide whether this ladder is fit for you. If the ladder is fit for you, we are here, city is here to help you to climb to the ladder and what are the other things you have to do. If it is not fit to you, of course there are so many ladders, we will take you through this journey to see other options. So there are hundreds of options in the world and the future is very, very bright for you. We hopeful and optimistic and with this small words in the name of God the benevolent the graceful I declare this program as inaugurated take care all the best thank you thank you sir now talk introduction by Dr. Riyas Abdullah K please sir A big thank you to um, to, to the city and all of you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon to wherever you are. Um, it's indeed a great pleasure to introduce this talk. Um, first of all, I'd like to say a big thank to Mr. Salam, uh, Mr. Zakari Saib, and um, um, all the other people behind the scenes within the city who made this happen. Um, uh, a part of this program, what we're trying to do is to share our knowledge uh, and message across the continents um, we have experts in India, we have experts in the United Kingdom, and our main aim is to spread this knowledge um, across the spectrum. Now, um, just to let people know what, what we do um, uh, as, as, um, as, as Excel UK. Excel UK is, a, is an educational charity uh, in the, in the uh, United Kingdom, um, which is formed by a group of uh, uh, professionals based in Kerala. Uh, we are part of the Kerala Association of Muslim Professionals who have been uh, functioning for the last um, six years, involved in a lot of charity work, and Excel UK is educational wing. Um, so we, we deal with the medical education, uh, medical careers, um, uh, technology, finance, business, and all the other various disciplines. Um, and our, our main aim is to provide support to our local partners and partners across the world uh, to, to, to promote education and training and careers. Uh, so that's what we do. Um, now, um, Coming to the actual talk of the day, we know the relevance of um, machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, automation. Uh, as, and as a doctor, I think I'm just getting familiar to these concepts. But uh, you know, the world over, this has uh, grown by leaps and bounds. Uh, in fact, in healthcare, the robots are doing surgery. Uh, in healthcare, it's all uh, automated systems in which we provide uh, remote blood pressure monitoring. Uh, I know the cars are going into automation. So this is a big, big, big um, area which is developing. And um, of course, you know, for, for, for big things, we need big people to talk, talk to us. Uh, and, and we have one of the big best people in the business here. It's uh, Mr. Abdul Salam Kundamal. Now, Salam is, is well known to us. He's an active member, ex executive member of our, of our Excel UK. But more than that, he has been in this industry for about 22 years. He's an IT solutions architect. He's got a master's in computer applications. Um, he's, I think he's got a big, big, huge profile. So we're just telling 
basic minimum stuff. He's worked for Elan companies like HAL India, Siemens UK, Mercedes Benz uh, uh, in, in the United Kingdom and 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 I in the United Kingdom. He's got a lot of certifications, including Google authorized trainer, Google certified architect, and Amazon uh, Web Service Architect professional. He's designed our websites. Uh, he's done a lot of things. He is uh, speaking around the globe most of the time, uh, and and he's quite a passionate um, IT trainer uh, in, into his area. Um, so without any further ado, um, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Salam Kundumal, um, Abdul Salam Kundumal, Salam, um, over to you, uh, and, a, and a big welcome to you all again, and hope you enjoyed the talk. Um, just before I go further, I just want to say the format of what we're going to do today. What we're going to do is we're going to have the inaugural talk for about um, 30 minutes, uh, for about 50 minutes to an hour uh, at the most. And after that, we have a question and answer session that, that is going to be a dedicated question and answer session. First, first we'll deal with um, Q&As Q related to Salam's talk. Then after that, we'll have a lot of other experts related to automation within, our, um, within the sector and also some general IT queries. And we'll go on to that and then we'll take your questions. So though our talk time is two hours, uh, by experience, we did one webinar yesterday. We ended up having uh, three or four hours because of the interest uh, that was there. So uh, feel free to come in and, and go out as, 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 as much as you can. Um, and I think without any further delay, uh, Salam, over to you, Salam. Uh, thank you, Riaz. Uh, that was a very, <laughs> very generous introduction, I think. I see I'm not that, <laughs> you know, expert as he spoke about, but um, I've been in the industry for a while. So I thought that the whole idea of this one is, you know, to give something back to the to the society where I come in, and I'm always a believer. You have to give something back to the society because I never think I'm here because of you know it's because of my because of me. There are lots of other elements which help. I mean, including the shops, you know, the shopkeep shopkeepers, you know, the people who help me to, you know, to uh, to cross a you know to cross a stream, and they are part of my journey. So we yeah, had to give something back. So ignore whatever you know Riaz has said so before i start i would like to order some food hanin are you there hanin is by the way my daughter she's uh, uh, she's studying for law in the university of kent so she's my uh, she will be my assistant today so can you all um, hear me all right yeah yes, salam okay, yeah, good. Good, good salam yeah okay hanin are you okay yeah hi Hello, can you share? Can you share your screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, hello. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Okay, share your screen and uh, can you order some? And don't you know? Don't forget that my favorite biscuit as well. Okay, this okay. is a system called, you know which we order uh, food in in the area we do. It's called uh, Starship. And I'll talk about it a bit later. So you got hot food as well, I get, uh, honey. Is that right? Yeah. So there's a pizza place. There's burgers. No, I don't want all of that in the morning. I just get some biscuits. And you know what my favorite biscuit is. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Just something from the supermarket. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. There we go. Okay, cool. And you got enough money to pay for that, I guess, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We need some bread and milk as well, so get those too. Okay, cool. cool. Don't give away, give away the credit card details, yeah? There are quite a few people. <laughs> there we go. It should be okay. about 50 minutes. How long? 50 minutes. Okay, so uh, you know, if it is uh, around close to our house, just let me know, yeah? Of course, yeah. Okay, thank you, honey. Bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Okay, so that's out of the way. Uh, so hopefully I'll get some food in between. <laughs> okay, so. So, okay, so uh, as uh, you know, most of the sp uh, people spoke here, I'll be talking about the, the hot, well, some of the hot subjects. There are a few people waiting in the, uh, the waiting room. So um, can you admit it? It's kind of coming on my screen. Okay. So um, as people said, you know, I'm, I'll be talking about, you know, uh, mainly the artificial intelligence and, 
uh, machine learning today. And as you know, this is some of the hot topics these days. So what is the agenda today? Uh, so I'm, within an hour, I don't think I, I, you know, I'll be making an expert in, in this area. So what uh, the, the agenda is, I, mean, I don't have a fixed agenda. The, it's basically there are loads of jargons thrown around in this industry like machine learning, deep learning, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, you know, algorithms, uh, you know, cyber attack and self-learning and all of that. So this is just to demystify you know what is what and just give you some pointers so you can do you can decide yourself whether you want to go that direction or not i'm pretty sure you know if i can get at least one person interested on on, on this one and follow that path i think i have done my job uh, that's my belief uh, let me just minimize that okay so yeah so without uh, I'll, I'll just uh, you know go one by two. so my my uh slide set is you know might not be useful just by its own so uh, it will only have some pointers which i can talk about yeah so if there is any questions obviously you can put it in the chat window and there's a panel of experts who will be who will try to answer those uh, questions as and when they come in and if there is anything specific to me uh, you can just put, mention my name as well okay i'm sure you know these guys uh, he is uh, a, you know, a quote from Sundar Pichai, who is the CEO of Google, he says, AI is probably the most important thing the, the humanity has ever worked on. And if you look at that, it's a really profound statement. I mean, most of us, you know, these are normally used by, you know, the, the people in the pharmaceutical industry or in the health industry and people like that. But a, a technology industry is speaking about the humanity, and, and that's quite interesting, which is why I, I, I put that in. And, and this could well be true. I mean, this will touch pretty much every aspect of our life. And this is another quote from uh, Stephen Hawkins, which, uh, as, pre as you might know, it's a, he's a physicist who's, um, who was working in the um, University of uh, Cambridge, which is about 40 minutes that way. It's quite close to me. I live in between kind of uh, Oxford and Cambridge. Uh, Cambridge is around 40 minutes this way, and uh, Oxford is about four, about 40 minutes that way. So, uh, so, so yeah, he's a professor of uh, you know in uh, as you know he, he was not able to walk. He had lots of problems, but this is one of his statements. So, A is likely to be the either the best or the worst thing to ha happen to the humanity. And you know, in some way, it is you know as Salam sir said, you know, it, it could just like any other technology facebook there was a, a, a thousand good things happen with that bit, including in the arab spring and loads of good things happen there are lots of people getting money for the charity and stuff like that but on the other side you know there are people who committed suicide because of the pressure peer pressure come from the facebook it really depends upon how you want to use the technology and uh, what um, stephen hawkins is saying is actually if it is used for the good it will going to be you know the best or could be the worst thing as well at the same time okay <laughs> this is uh, this might be quite interesting you might be thinking actually why is he doing it you know it's, is that a wrong slide it's not a wrong slide um, basically i'm going to tell you a story and, uh, and and probably then it will kind of become a bit more clearer so this is a, something happened in uh, in usa uh, there was a one second There was a single dad uh, living with her 14 year old daughter and they were getting loads of um, vouchers for baby items through the post and uh, <clears throat> this guy was uh, uh, divorced from her, his um, wife for about 10 years so he got these vouchers and he was thinking he was thinking why you know these vouchers which is uh, you know my wife hasn't been living with me for some time so he called that uh, the, it was the company was came out and <clears throat> called them and said um, see it looks like you got some you know something wrong they i'm getting loads of vouchers for um, for baby items and uh, and pregnancy care and stuff like that and uh, they looked at their uh, data and said sorry it looks like there's a mistake and uh, they have corrected it a few days later <clears throat> it started again the guy got really annoyed because somehow Probably he didn't quite like the, you know, the, the remi remembering his wife. Um, so he got, he got quite crossed and uh, called them and again said, see, you had to stop doing this. You know, I, 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 my wife is not here. We have been separated for some time. And, um, you know, I don't want this world just to be 
on my doorstep and uh, they looked at uh, the details they said it could be something wrong with our system we'll have a look and they looked through the system and said you know we'll come back in a couple of days time so they looked at the system and called them back in in two days and said uh, sorry sir it looks like your daughter is pregnant so that is that's where the penny drops you know uh, this is how the technology is going. So basically, the, 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 the story is actually this. A company, a big company knows somebody is pregnant before her, he, her father knows about it. And that's quite a scary you know, thought. If you think, if we elaborate it, there will be quite a few things, you know, we don't know when others know. There was another story which I can tell personally. I, I booked a, a ticket you know, for a cinema with my daughter about a few years ago. Um, and um, I haven't booked, uh, it was nothing to do with the Google. I booked through the, the, the normal system and uh, uh, their booking system. And I got a, a pop-up about 20 minutes ago saying, uh, there's a traffic between now and, uh, and the cinema. You may want to start uh, uh, now. And, and that is, you know, these are all <laughs> quite a, you know, there is nothing called privacy anymore. So they are getting data every time. So before we go to the machine learning, I hope that uh, you know that uh, that story is clear. So before we go into detail about um, you know machine learning, let me just move this uh, waiting. Yeah. You may want to disable that waiting room or something. I can see a, a pop up on the top all the time saying "see waiting room." Okay. So how do we learn as human being? Uh, there are, it's called a walk. It's, it can be either visual. I'm a visual learner. You have to see something, then you can learn about it. Or it's auditory, which you hear something and, and, and learn about it and read and writing. Um, that's another way. Some people like to do that. And if you look at the, take the first uh, letters of each one, this is the easiest way to remember. It's called walk, V A R K. And kinesthetic is obviously touch and feel. Uh, you know, even if you're blind, people learn by touching and feeling. But now we'll, uh, if we'll move on to, to the machines and how about the machine, how do they learn? Um, there are something called supervised learning, unsupervised learning and reinforced learning. Again, I'll go through this one by one. Um, Rubas Bhai, if, I mean, if some, one of you can be on unmute, that would be good because I might be asking some, you know, some questions uh, in between. So uh, you can, can respond to me, is that okay? Yes, Alambay. Okay, so what you, I want you to, if I'm going too fast or too slow, just alert me so that I can slow down a little bit or, you know, uh, or go fast if you want me to. So there are three types of learning for the machines. One is called supervised, unsupervised, and reinforced. So what is supervised? Supervised is actually you put a label onto, onto something and then ask the machine to learn about it. I'll explain a bit more. So for in here, you can see three coins. One is a, 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 a one rupee, a one euro, and one dirham. Okay, one rupee is three grams, one euro is seven grams, and uh, one dirham is four grams. So you let the, let the computer know these are the this is the property of this particular coin. Then if you have a simple weighing machine, which is connected to that machine, that machine can immediately say, oh, this is a, a one rupee coin, a seven rupee coin, uh, a one rupee coin, a one euro coin, or a dirham. So this is called a supervised learning. And this has been used quite widely every day. And we, uh, we, you know, some of them we know, some of them we don't. And unsupervised is slightly different. So basically, um, this is uh, there is no label data. You put loads of data into the system and ask the computer itself to uh, to make sense of it. Again, I'll give you a simple example. Um, there are quite a few um, uh, kind of uh, chats coming in. I think so. If you want, somebody want to look and if there is something for me, you can obviously uh, you know, alert me on that. So this is, um, you know, a, a cricket match. There is runs as well as wickets. Okay, on the x-axis, uh, you know, you got wickets, and on the y-axis, you got runs. So the, and and the data is put onto that, and you, you can see uh, there are few people who has got quite a few runs, and there are quite a few people, um, you know, uh, quite a few wickets. But what machine doesn't know is who is a bowler or who is a 
who is a batsman. And in this case, you know, if uh, there are loads of runs, uh, the computer decide, uh, assumes it's a, he is a, a batsman. And if it is loads of wickets, the computer assumes it, it, it's a bowler. But this can, this might not always be correct. And um, machine learning is all about probability, the best probability or kind of, you know, it's a kind of guessing game rather than the, the accurate I and mean, not like a prediction of programming. So if there is an all rounder which might fit into all of that, you know, both of that, it, it, the data can be slight, uh, like, you know, slightly wrong. And, and that's how it is. This is called reinforced learning, which we will be going a bit more detail on to this one uh, uh, today. This is basically just like, a, you know, we are teaching a, a little child. So if there's a dog coming and the child says it's a cat, we will correct them saying actually, no, it's not a cat, it's a dog. It's pretty, but if he says the 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 voice or the uh, the uh, the child is saying it's a it's a dog and it, it is true then you know he says we will give them a reward and it's it's exactly the same way it's working on the computer exactly the same way um, you can even punish the computer <laughs> saying actually it's it's you know just giving a timeout and 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 some kind of uh, feedback onto that it's wrong or right okay hope that is clear. So now a, a question to to you. I don't know, Drewas, whether you made it as a quiz or not. Facebook recognizes your friend in a picture from an album of tagged photographs. What kind of learning is this? I'll give you 30 seconds. You can put it in the chat window. Drewas, is there any, is there any um, you know, answer which is coming out loud uh it's yeah i can see the majority is supervised at the moment okay if you have found super uh, you know answer as supervised that means people were listening that is the answer <laughs> <laughs> they haven't uh, you know bored yet <clears throat> Artificial intelligence and Google. I, I have been looking through this, uh, you know, for uh, for some time, and uh, I'm, I'm a Google trainer as well, so I know more about Google than any, anything else. Google is, uh, and and to be honest, they are on the top on this game. Um, I have looked at Microsoft as well as um, Amazon. They are all in the game, competing each other. But in, when it comes to artificial intelligence, the others are nowhere <clears throat> near to where Google is. Next question. Uh, does anybody know who this is? Again, 30 seconds to, uh, to answer. Namsit or Rubas, is there any answer? Uh, yes, someone has said founder of YouTube. Okay. And I, I hope there will, might be a few more answers coming. But yeah, I think we, we, we need more. More response from, from the participants, please. Someone has just popped in, founder of Zoom. Yeah. And Aegis has said it's someone who has designed Google logos. Okay. Uh, and uh, by the looks of it, the ethnicity has kind of given Jack Ma. Okay, Jack Ma. Okay, that's a good guess. Steve Chen. Okay, I haven't got the answer I was looking for. Uh, is it he's, Bruce Lee? Is it Bruce Lee? No, it's not Bruce Lee. He's uh, he's, he's still living. It's not dead yet. <laughs> okay, I think uh, yeah, I, I'll. I'll, I'll uh, we have another man, Eric Juan. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, I, I'm gonna give uh, his name is um, actually KG. Okay, he is the he was a champion of. Um, a game called Go, okay, and I'll, I'll speak about you know why it is important. And this guy was defe defeated by a Google's AI machine called DeepMind in, in 2017, and that news is from uh, BBC. Google AI defeats human Go champion, and this was a huge, huge leap in 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 the artificial intelligence and machine learning. And Google has said this has taken 10 years away from their research. 10 years. And that's how how you know significant that breakthrough was, and this is you know and, and I'll tell you why that is. And this is the the board game called Go, and it has got about um, you know <laughs> this is a staggering number. Look at that. 
the number of legal board portion on a go has been calculated to be approximately 2 multiplied by 10 to the power of 170, okay, which is vastly greater than the number of atoms known in the observable universe, okay, and which is estimated by 10, 10 to the power of 80. And that 10 to the power of 80 is actually that observable is quite important there because you know there is there are there is universe out there which we don't know about okay but let's say it's 10 to the power of 80 but this if you look at the number it's 10 to the power of 170 that is 10 you know then 170 zeros at the end of it multiplied by two and, and it's it and, and that that's it's that complex that game is and you you know chess i mean we believe actually chess is quite complex and this is you know thousand times complex than you know HS is. And, and uh, another thing is actually uh, important about this AlphaGo is it is challenge agnostic. What that means is actually if it is they are playing Go today, tomorrow they have given chess or, or simply knots and cross, um, it will still do exactly the same thing. And you know that that's the beauty of it. It is it's gonna learn about itself and, and speak about it. And I think in, in uh, as of the uh, the, the stones, it's called, there's about 170, uh, 181 black stones and 180 white stones uh, when they were playing. Okay, this is uh, the, the, the path of a single stone within that, out of 81. And if you look at that, it, it, you can see how exponential that is. And if you draw one of that again, you can see that how that tree is growing. It can be really, really complex. And 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 uh, the A, uh, the Alpha Go was able to defeat that person in that game, and he was an unbeaten person until that time. Okay, I'm gonna have some fun with the uh, you know AIM ML now because you have been listening to me for some time. Uh, so I'm gonna share my my iPad. Can you see my iPad on the screen? Yeah, we can. Okay, cool. Okay, this is um, something called outerdraw.com. You can go on and have a look. Why I took iPad is because it's a bit more easier to, to draw on it. So this, you can draw, uh, let us say I'm gonna draw a car. Oh, it's not a car yet. Oh, okay, let me just undo that. Start over. That's not a good car, is it? I don't know because it's sharing. Uh, it's quite slow. But anyway, um, okay, because, okay. Okay, let me just draw something else. Okay, so look at that. So it, it basically, from the, since I was sharing the screen, it was quite slow, but normally it's a bit more faster. So from the drawing which I was doing, there it is kind of guessing what I'm drawing, and it it kind of uh, you know creates an image based on it. And this is purely um, you know AI in in. Uh, so uh, let us draw something else. What do you want to draw? Okay, let us see whether I can uh, you know. Draw a leaf. Is that a leaf? I don't know. Try a mobile salam bhai. Okay. So you can see, see when I draw that much, you can see on the top, it's it's kind of auto draw. Do you mean can you see that on the top? Do you mean leaf and it is showing different kind of leaves in there? So see you can I can select that or I can say select one of those or or, or it can be a feather. So it kind of you know guessing what I'm drawing. So what I'm, what's happening is actually from the, from the move, it kind of guesses because it has got loads of data of the people who has drawn before and loads of images it can scan through and kind of guesses what it is. And there is a similar game called Cube Draw. And this is a game which you can play with your family. 
uh, it's and it's quite nice. You can see I will get 20 seconds. Within that, I had to draw a nose. Okay, I'm gonna get, take that challenge and see uh, whether uh, I can draw a. Oh, it guessed it. Okay, okay. The, that's um, I was playing last night. So let's do another bench. Okay, and it, I'll get only 20 seconds. Come on. Okay, bench. So how do I draw a bench? Uh, is that a bench? Oh, uh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> Penguin. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I got it. So this is the idea. So in this one, what's happening is, you know, it, if you look at the bottom, it, it kind of guesses all the time what, I mean, I don't know what it was next. Uh, what was what was it saying to draw? I don't tree. know. Tree. Tree. Okay. Oh, donut. Next one. Okay. You can see in the bottom it will it will it will try. So you can see it's a circle, and it's immediately trying to guess what it is. Yeah. So I'm I'm getting it right. So you got the idea. So basically, the, this both games are from uh, their you know just their trials on on um, uh, on artificial intelligence. So. In this one, what's happening is, uh, you know, it, it, from from the drawing, it kind of guesses what we are trying to draw and, and takes from that, it makes some uh, some prediction based on that. And I'm gonna you know, give you, you know, what it is trying, how it is working out, what, you know, what we are, uh, how it is working it out in, uh, in next, uh, you know, few slides. Okay, uh, are you back to the screen? Yeah? Yeah, we are. Back to my screen? No. Is that right? Which screen yeah. are you seeing? Yeah, yeah, your screen, yeah. your drawing screen. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. okay, so this is auto draw, which is what I was showing, and this is the cube draw, which, which we have already seen. And there is another one called Google um, Cloud Vision API. And these are both are working based on the same uh, technology used by Cloud Vision. Cloud Vision, we, some, it might be something we always use. If you are using Google Photos, you can see something called Google Lens in there. And this is their, um, you know, as you can see, it's uh, uh, Google Vision. And this is a, a, a good example of, um, so I, I'm, uh, I'm uploading a picture which I taken from uh, Istanbul uh, a few years ago, uh, a family photo, and I'm just dropping it there. And obviously I'm not a robot, although I sound like one. And it kind of works out. So look at that. It, it kind of says it's, a, it's, it's called Galata Tower, uh, which is in Istanbul. And you can see it, it even locates where it is. Within and how, how long we took? It took less than a, less than a second to work out where it is, and even see it, it even finds out the faces. And this is a, you know the scary stuff. It even finds out find out the kind of uh, you know the expression you got on your face. So you got you know my son, my wife, and my daughter in there, and you can see you know look at their face too, which is my wife, which is obviously very happy because uh, she is not spending the money. I was. <laughs> and you can see my uh, daughter as well, you know, she's also extremely happy. And my son is kind of neutral and obviously, um, you know, people who knows me can uh, you know, find out um, who know why that is. Uh, and this is, this is how it is, uh, the, the, where the technology is going. And if you look at the, you know, the objects in there, it kind of says there are people in there and there are, and there are some labels, there's a landmark, a tower, tourism. So all this information, a wealth of information, what they have done is just from the photo I uploaded. And there is something, obviously there is something called Google Lens, yeah? And uh, I'll, I, this is uh, a video I taken from my, uh, my, my, from my phone. And let me just play that. So basically uh, this is, another, so if you look, uh, this is a picture of Acropolis in Athens on the back, on the back it's, it's one of the monuments in Athens and that is again me there. And if you look at that, if you look at 
on put on Google Lens, it kind of scans it as you can see some dots coming on that. And then at the end, it says predicts exactly what it is and where it is. And it gives all the information based on just that photograph. So what it says, look at this, scans that photograph and look at from its, uh, you know, what it has got already, the wealth of data Google has got and just, uh, you know, matches the, the, the width and the, and the height and all of that within a few milliseconds and just comes back and says, okay, this is what it is. And it even gives the phone number of that, that location. So if you have a photograph and you, you want to call them, you know, you don't even know what their office is. There is even a phone number in there so, so by which you can contact them. So this is, you know, very, very powerful. So let me just go back to, so these are some of the things in, in practice, what is uh, happening. Um, Hanin, by the way, uh, do you know what happened to the delivery? I'm already hungry. Hanin? Yeah, um, I, think the, I think the store is quite busy. So I think they're just packing our order now. Okay, cool. I'll let you know when it, when it leaves the shop. Okay, please. Thank you. Thank you, honey. So I'm going to go a, a bit uh, uh, deeper now um, and, uh, you know, just to explain how, how that things were happening. Uh, so, so far it was kind of practical. I'm going to go a bit, th a little bit theory. So what is artificial intelligence? And I'm not going to read through all of that. Um, so if you look at that, there are three circles in there underneath. It's deep learning, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. So machine learning is it's all of that was a starting. So what we have these days is actually data, you know, millions and millions of, you know, data coming in, in every second. So what's happened in last 10, 15 years is, uh, you know, the, the, the cost for the storage has come down, come down, come right down. And the machine has gone really, really fast. So every time we, you know, uh, go to Facebook or search, the data has been created and they are being stored. Even if you are you know, searching something stupid and it, that's all being uh, stored in a database by Google just to, and there was an influencer study that done in about 2017, just to predict where the influencer that was in the UK, where um, the influencer will, uh, will come in and, and whether it's H1 and one on. So whenever you have a headache or something like that, you're gonna search, you know, about the, you know, I have a cough or something like that where the next pharmacy and they are going to store that based on that, they, they kind of make models out of that. So that's what the machine learning is. This is, you know, going through the wealth of data and making, making sense out of that. So I'll give you an example. In, in my office, um, you know, we get the data from Facebook, uh, Twitter and, you know, and YouTube and all the things which I don't really know about all these teenagers and all use. <laughs> and uh, I'm not a great user of uh, Facebook, but um, you know, yeah. So they get all that, they, they do something called, um, um, uh, what is it called? Their um, uh, analysis on the behavior of the user. So the CTO, CTO are gonna ask or CX are gonna ask, you know, how was, how did we do last year? So they you know, get all these data, including the call, uh, when you, you know, a sentiment analysis, that's what it is called. So when you call them, they, they store the, the audio data and there is something called Amazon Poly, uh, which converts that audio data into, into text and they can go through that text. So even if you're calling, they can go through that text and say, okay, last year, um, the, the customer was not happy and it's, you're gonna ask why that is and they, can, they might say, okay, this system was running a bit slow or you know, our main website was down for, you know, for, for a few hours because of that, the customer satisfaction has, has come down. So that's what it, this machine learning is. Deep learning is actually, you know, from that model itself. So you have done halfway through. So from the result of that, they make it individual balls of individual news. From that, you can infer it. You can, you know, infer much, much, um, you know, um, much more relevant data, data out of that. That's a study of the results itself, which is what, you know, CR probably can explain it a bit, bit later in the next uh, talk. 
so that's what called deep learning so it's it's a you know if you look at the it's a subset of machine learning which tasks are broken down and distributed into machine learning algorithms so that that is called model so it's steady about the models itself artificial intelligence is just an a, a covering out of all this which makes use of deep learning and and machine learning and makes practical things you know uh, helping the uh, prosthetic limb and things like that's what artificial intelligence is it just you know basically the the usage of machine machine learning and lead deep learning and this is what i was talk talking about the uh, you know deep learning so if you can see this is what uh, the machine learning creates a model out of that which is what what you can see this hidden out of that and uh, you know from that you're going to get a set of output which is what you know as i said when uh, the the ceo calls and says you know how how was the customer feeling uh, in general last year and uh, you know they said it, it is it wasn't quite good then there is people called uh, you know um, data scientists and that is people like uh, you know there is uh, someone called siad in this call and they go through that data and find out exactly on what time on what you know um, what day these people were upset and about what and that's what you know and if you look at that this you can see some lines across that's called neural network and this is that's called as i said you know it's because it's a bit cool there is nothing to do with our uh, you know our brain or anything in there it just uh, you know some uh, funky word and this is a simple example of a, a machine learning and a deep learning you got an input and you got a feature extraction which is what i was talking about you know um, the, the the labels and you know then based on that you get a classification and you get an output saying whether it is a car or um, or, or a not a car so in this in feature extraction you can say you know it, it's got four tires it has got a you know a, uh, four windows or you know six windows if you say you know take the the front and the back that's what the the feature extraction is and based off upon that you can classify it whether it's a car or not a car whereas deep learning it's kind of going back and forth so it comes back to the feature extraction again and say whether it can be so if there is a sports car and you know a, a you know a top um, open top car and thing you know it's be quite difficult for a, for a machine to understand whether that is a car or not and if you look at the cars the variety of cars we have these days it, it's quite uh, very very different uh, uh, so it's not just one car it has to understand it has to understand any car and even some cars you know it, it can be kind of tricky car with a with a bit of you know um, space on the back where you, where you can you know carry things which, which is mostly used in america so that can be considered a, as a car or a truck so those kind of, uh, you know if you put it in in this machine learning you know algorithm it might not say whether it is a car but if you put it in the deep learning algorithm it will definitely say it is a car or a van or a truck in another case so this is something called a linear regression uh, linear regression is something we were traditionally using this as an example here so you got a, a, a small house which is 70000 pounds and you got a bigger car, bigger house 120000 and if it is big, a bit more bigger uh, it is about 160000 pounds so uh, and this is all a linear curve so um, you are just assuming as it goes bigger you know the, the price going to increase and and that's probably not the case for example this house if it this house is in a flood prone area the the the, the price is going to come down and if you take that kind of approach onto our uh, normal life this is going to what's going to happen if you look at that as you can see the so this is the first day of wedding first day of wedding you obviously have you know one husband and if you if you plot it across for you know 10 months it, it says uh, you know by end of next month you, uh, yes you can see the end of next month you will have over four dozens of husband and this is where it gets wrong there's an obvious mistake in there because that the sample data is quite low they have taken only one set of data which is normally the case which is not normally the case but for the sake of it for, the, for a laugh it's it's quite nice and this is called a scattered graph again you know in next class hopefully you know um cr will be going a bit more detail on that so this is considering other facts this is a, a, a you know the kids passed or failed in a 
uh, in a test. In this case, it's just passed and, and failed. It just draws one line across, which kind of classifies average students and, and, and above average students in there. But if you look at it, it, it can be more complex than that. Uh, and rather than a linear so this is taking care of multiple dimensions for example in uh, you know in in modern uh, uh, kind of uh, data extraction uh, people take multiple items so uh, you know um, in the same kind of uh, same example of the house you know there are there can be the location of the house the price can be different so this is kind of taking different elements and adding multiple dimension to that so i'm not going too detailed in that so what i'm saying is actually it's not always linear and in in um, in a machine learning algorithm that's exactly what what's happening uh, basically it takes multiple uh, properties of a particular data in different direction and slice and dice it as it requires. So let me see, you know, how does it work? You know, how this um, um, kind of machine learning works. So I, I'm going to give you a, a quick question in here. I hope, you know, you haven't um, slept yet. Yeah, I hope you are all with me now. So in this one, my question is, which one are the shoes? Rubas? Or anybody who's muted, not muted. Hanin, can you tell me which are the shoes? Uh, bottom left and then the third one on the second row. Okay. <laughs> and that is correct. And it's quite easy for us to understand which, you know, uh, you know, which one is, uh, which are the shoes. But for a computer, it's a very, very difficult to understand which is, um, you know, a, which is, a, which one is a shoe because we understand we kind of infer whether that's a shoe or not because we have been seeing shoes for you know probably from year one onwards if you look at this one the shoe the first one and the and the third one is very very different and if you said you know in, in the first case we were saying you know the, the labeled late data supervised learning so if you say the shoe looked like this with a flat bottom and lace and you know two colors it will only recognize that as a shoe but it wouldn't rec recognize these stilettos as a shoe. That is just because our brain is so, so powerful. It can go back to our, you know, 20 years of data within milliseconds and find out what exactly what it is. But for, unfortunately, the machine can't do it. We had to teach them, you know, which one is a shoe or not. This is, uh, you know, another question. So I, I'm going a little, uh, and one notch up here, then this part is actually quite important. If you understand this one, you have, you know exactly what a, a machine learning is. Okay, so could you just tell me what the pattern here, what, what is the relation between X and Y here? Uh, Azim or uh, Azim is a doctor, so I'm pretty sure he would know. Can you tell me the, uh, the, the relation here? We are seeing few Hello? responses on the chat window. Do you want me to read that out? Yes, please. Yeah, at least one. So Mohammed Sinad says X differs in one, Y differs in two. Is that the one? Y differs in two. Uh, yeah, any, any other ones? We have a few, few more. Uh, Ajah Samad says X equals one Y equals two. Okay. Um, okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, two x is not correct. It's two x minus one. So if you look at the at the pattern, it's minus one minus uh, you know minus three. That is two multiplied by minus one minus uh, and and minus one out of that. So minus two minus one. That's minus three. Two multiplied by zero minus one. Okay, and and uh, you know one multiplied by two. It is two two minus one one. Okay, so what will happen in our human brain when we are working out this is we got to go on first one, oh, minus one. Okay, let me just take a pointer and it will, it might. So in this one, it's quite clear. In the first one, we're gonna work out, oh, what is it? Oh, it's multiplied, yeah, it is kind of two X minus one. So by the third one, you know what the answer would be. You would say it is two X minus one. From that time onwards, what you're gonna do is fit this answer to the rest of the things. You're never gonna go until the end of the uh, end of the pattern 
and that is very very important in in uh, in the case of machine learning okay so what machine learning does is exactly what our brain does from the from half the time onwards so by this time you're going to work out what the formula is from their own words you're going to fit that answer into the question okay so you're flipping it around and that's what a machine learning does so i'm going to give you a bit more detail onto that so in traditional programming if you know what happens is say you know people who are uh, uh, somebody raised the hand okay okay you can put the question in the question window um, if you want so uh, you got the rules and and the data uh, and you got an answer so let, let us say um, you know i want to see uh, all the employees who is less than 40 years old and um, so what you're going to do is actually you're going to go through a loop saying you know go through all the employees within that company let us say you know for um, for each employees in employees table and if the age is less than 40 you get the data okay you get an answer for that but in machine learning this is this if you understood this you're going to say oh is that it what a machine learning is what an artificial intelligence and it, it's quite simple so what happens in uh, in machine learning scenario is you put the answers in and the data okay and in machine learning guys where you got the you got the model in there in what you spoke about there and you get the rules based on that so this is basically exactly what you have what you were doing from here onwards so you got the answer already and you try to get and you got the data as well and you get try to fit that questions into that answers okay so you, go, you already has to feed the answers to the to the machine then only the machine learning will work so this is just like you know asking me to fight with mike tyson and say win it yeah so i know what is the outcome you know to win the to the boxing but you know i'm not as strong as uh, you know mike tyson no, obviously not <laughs> i'm sure actually it's it's a you know, small finger would be enough but i don't have a choice there the only choice i have is to fight because I, I I know the answer is given to me, to at the end result is given to me. So this is again, you know, asking me to uh, with a, a tennis racket and and um, say, you know, your task is to win, but you had to play with Rafael Nadal, for example, or uh, you know, um, yeah, or or people on the top. So at, at that time again, you had to learn it quickly as possible. That's exactly a machine learning does. Hope that makes sense. Okay. Now I'm gonna give you. Uh, I'll you know give you an example of what I meant by that. Okay. I'm gonna. This is a game called Atari Break um, uh, Atari. Okay. And this is um, uh, one of the old games that we used to play it in uh, in in the lab. When this was the only game you can get on a Unix machine. So the idea is actually you got this uh, a blue line there and this is a little ball it's going to bounce up and down then you will be moving this this blue um, line left and right to block that ball not and don't allow it to go downwards and break all the um, you know um, all the bricks here one by one so it kind of bounce up and down and break all the all of these um, uh, bricks that is the idea so what happens is, uh, you know, when in a machine learning algorithm, it, there will be some score here. So the what is given to the machine is, as I said, increase the the, the point here, and the clue given to that is just this pictures. Yes, it doesn't even know the machine doesn't even know this moves. As I said, this is just like you know giving me a racket and go, putting me into a tennis court and say you win it. I know the answer, but you know, and then I know who is coming on on the other side is uh, you know Rafael Nadal, for example. Okay, and at that time again, and I don't have a choice but win it. So I'm gonna give you, uh, I'm gonna show you that uh, you know, and again, watch this quite carefully. Okay, and uh, oh, not that one.
I was queuing something yesterday, that's why. No, 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 no. Sorry. I don't know why that is not finishing. Oh, that is sorry, sorry. That deep minds this one. Oh, I clicked on the wrong one. Dad, uh, should we check up on our food? Yes, please. Yeah. So uh, let's just have a look at the app. Do you so, want to share this? Share the screen. Uh, I have done. Yeah. So okay. we, we can see here that our robot has been packed and it's on its way. So that's okay. the top and that's our house on the right. So you can see about halfway here. Okay, so do you want to share the screen and show it to everyone? I am the screen. Do you have to stop shops shops stop sharing the lab? No, he, he, if he sh it starts um, you know it will automatically go away anyway. It's okay. not good. Yeah. Okay, do you want to start sharing? Yeah, it's come down, yeah, good. Okay. Okay, so so what's happened is actually, so you can see a little robot there on the, on the screen. So that robot is, um, you know, my biscuit It's kind of loaded onto that. It's kind of started from the, from the supermarket and it is on its way. So it's arriving in 23 minutes, but no, it's going to update, um, you know, every other minute and, and let me know where it is. Yeah. But that 23 minutes seems to be good. I just started, honey. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, you can stop now. Thank you, honey. That's all right. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna share back my screen, sorry. So just uh, back onto my Atari breakout. So uh, Atari breakout, breakout, as I said, it's it's it's, it's an old game. It was even available on a, on a, on a, a you know text only machine like a, a, a Linux machine. And you may want to read this. So the most important things to know is that the the agent is uh, agent is given the sensory input, what do you see on the screen, and it was asked. It was ordered to maximize the score of, on the screen, and that's it. Okay, so it is just given the screen and said, you know, can you see the screen, uh, the, the the point on the top, just to maximize it. And no domain knowledge is involved in this, which means the algorithm doesn't know the concept of board or what the controls exactly do. So it just asked, you know, to, to play. Just given the tennis racket and say, yeah, go and play. And then let us see what happens. So this is starting in 10 minutes of training, okay? So it, it, you can see that the, the, bo, uh, the, the red line is moving left and right. And you can see some balls ex escaping. So the ball should not be, so in, 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 a, in a proper game, if you are really good, the ball should not be going beyond, the, beyond that, uh, uh, you know, that uh, kind of reddish line. But you can see he's losing quite a few times. This is after two hours of training. This is, you know, the, the machine is asked to keep on playing the same thing. And it kind of works out from its mistakes. So this is where we were talking about the reinforced, it reinforced learning. So when the ball goes down, it gets a punishment. Uh, this, this one goes down. The, 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 the kind of, uh, you know, point goes down. So it knows that I have done something wrong and it learns from that and keeps on playing. I mean, if you can understand this well, I, I think, you know, I have done some justice to my, my, my class today. 
So this is after 240 uh, minutes, which is after four hours. This is where the magic happens. It realizes that digging a tunnel through the wall is the most effective technique to beat the game. Okay, and now let's watch that. So it kind of, if you look at on the, on the left, it kind of creates a tunnel there. And the good thing is that the machine itself has worked it out, yeah? So this is probably, in, a, in, the, in Nadal's case, I'm finding some way to cheat Nadal. Probably I'm gonna go back and, and you know, cut his uh, strings or something like that to win the game. So it kind of works out itself to how to, you know, how to get, the, uh, get that higher score. And, and that's quite amazing. And this is actually, it was a surprise for the, the people who developed this as well. So they, they might not have been able to play as good as the machine itself. So this is what we call the reinforced learning and, and, the, and the deep learning comes in. The, when the second part of that is where the deep learning comes in, it kind of thinks, it, it got a model first. So the idea is, you know, to, to break the, uh, these uh, bricks uh, and get on the top, but then it worked on that model itself and found a better way to do it. Okay, it's kind of better it's, itself. Hope that is, you know, made some sense. So let me go back. And that game is called Atari Baghdad. And this is exactly the same thing which they developed as AlphaGo, which defeated, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the champion. And uh, it's exactly the same algorithm, if you like. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna go a, 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 a notch up here uh, just to, you know, for those who are, uh, you know, studying for postgraduates and postgraduates and, 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 and uh, who has done engineering and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm pretty sure others will also understand. So there's a game called Rock, Paper, Scissors. So um, I'm sure some people might know. So basically, if you hold your hand like that, it is, uh, it's a rock and this is scissors and this is paper. Okay, you might be thinking, wait, this is about an artificial intelligence. Why this game? And this is uh, important. So the idea is actually let the machine understand what your gesture is. So if you put your hand like that, it is a rock. And if you put your uh, in a hand like that, it's, it is, you know, it's a scissor. And if you put your hands like that, it's a scissors. And it's a game, you know, kids here play it. Like, you know, uh, we were used to play it at home, you know, something like, uh, um, you know, uh, what is it? it to defeat something. Uh, the Akkara Gukkara Kuchapi in the game and something like that. I, I can't quite remember that. It's similar to that. So it, when, when it comes, two people put the same kind of gesture, that's a draw. And if it is, you know, a rock and a paper, you know, a rock gets the priority and things like that. that so this is just to make the machine play that. The, the problem with this, I mean, in, in the, if you're doing a traditional programming uh, that we had to program for all these different kind of hands and different kind of gestures as well. And also some people can, uh, said you know a rock like that with their thumb out and if it is paper some people can just do like that and some people might be just with four fingers and if you look at these different you know skin tones there is white black so to work out you know in a traditional programming you had to write you know hundreds of thousands of lines of code and even then you know this is uh, you know um, pixel so every pixel for example if it's a black pixel black hand there'll be you know loads of um, uh, zeros in there just under you know to make out it can be really really complex we had to cater for all these scenarios but in if you just go back to the machine learning we already said we we will feed the the answer to that so the answer is this you know you have three possibilities one is rock one is another one is scissors and another one is paper. There are only three possibilities you can have. So the machine already knows the, the answer. That is the learning phase. Okay. At that time, they're going to create a model uh, which is which is there, which is where your you know, neural network and everything comes in. Then you don't need the answer from there onwards. You only need the predictions. Okay. So I got the game, uh, you know, the, the code for the game. Uh, with me and I'm going to start it because it's going to take a little bit of time uh, to to run it. Okay, so 
this is the code, uh, you know, the, there are a few things before that to load the, the images and things like that. There is about 840 images being loaded of each gesture. So you got uh, total training images, rock is 114 and paper is 814 and scissors 814. Okay. And it has, uh, and it, they are all by uh, 150 by 150, quite small images and uh, about, um, you know, three, three bits of color. And then it is just asked to uh, to um, yeah to make a model and get get it right. So let me just run that. Okay. So it just started running. So if you look at the bottom of this one, it's gonna give you an answer immediately. And the accuracy, if you look at the accuracy 0.4, and that's pretty uh, 0.35, which means it is pretty much, you know, um, it hasn't learned anything at all because what, what it is saying is it, it can be rock or it, it just divided by 33 percentage, which is exactly, you know, uh, one by three, which means actually <laughs> it could be rock, it could be uh, scissors, or it could be hand, uh, sorry, it could be paper. It just says, uh, you know, one of those things. But this is just first iteration of that, and we will come back to this. And each of the iteration we have about seventy-nine functions within that, just to learn about it. And uh, it, it just this is the important bit. The, if you look at the accuracy, it is thirty-three percentage. Yeah, at this point, and we'll come back to this one and see after some time what happens. My machine gonna go a little bit slow from now onwards, I guess, but uh, I think it should be all right. So now. From now onwards, what is happening in that game is this interfer uh, in, uh, you know, inference phase, not interference, actually. So you got the data and the model, and, and it's going to give you the predictions, which is what we want. And the what are the predictions you have? There are only three predictions you can have, either a rock, a scissor, or a paper. Okay, And this, which is what we, it was giving out. And it, it had only about 33% of accuracy. And how does it check it? Because we know what the answer is. So you just check with the real answer and say, oh, it's wrong, and it's gonna go back and, and, and iterate the same thing. So you can see, this is the code for that. You can see it's, it's a 150 by 150 and, and uh, you know, um, uh, three bit color uh, deep. You can see, it is, and there is a, a 512 there, and I'll, I'll just explain what that 512 is. So you got uh, the function from zero to 512, and if you have a hand like that, and these are the pixels within that hand, and just infers that uh, that particular picture and, and and puts it into this that three categories. So you can see one zero zero here. So you, one is rock and zero is uh, it, it, these are rock paper or scissors. And the first uh, in the, this function by looking at this hand, this function is saying it is a zero. Uh, sorry, it is a rock. So which is why it has put one. And what happens is it put different, it initializes different uh, different uh, variables within that. In, in machine learning's case, it is called parameters, but it's not parameters. It just, uh, you know, self-initiated variables to fit into that because we know the answer. As I said, that's quite important. We know the answer, okay? And it that 512 is basically putting, going through that, that same function 512 times, but with different variables. Okay, and in the, in, the, in the second one, you can you can see it's a different hand there, which is like that, and it says it's a paper. So you can see it, all the functions are saying it is a paper, and uh, it's kind of iterate the same thing for 512 times. And you can see a little fungus coming on onto that, and uh, as I said, that is called neural networks. And this is nothing but the same function trying this, the, that function with the difference variables to get that answer, that particular answer. So it, because of the iterations, you can see it's kind of going and come, coming back like that. So it, it will gonna create something like a web and to make it a bit more cool and a bit more current and you know, a bit more mysterious, um, they're gonna, they call it a, a neural network. It's nothing to do with our neuron. It's quite simple, as I said, it's, it's just initializing uh, those functions with different variables, random variables to make to fit into that category. Hope that makes some sense. Okay, and there is something called convolutions, which is also happening. Can I have the time, please, Rubas? Am I on time? Namsit? 
Am I good with time? Uh, yes. Um, do you have more slides? Uh, no, no, not much. Uh, in the deck? No, no. Okay, how I much think, I got? I think you can try and wrap it up in okay, five, ten okay. minutes. Okay, okay, that's fine. Thank you. So there is something called convolution happening, and the convolution is nothing. But if you have worked with um, uh, you know photographs, it's just uh, filtering. Uh, so you know, in this case, you got few stairs in there, and uh, you know it, it takes uh, it puts some uh, lines across it and makes it quite small. What happening in that one is some of the characteristics of this stair will become quite clear in here. You can see it. You know it, the machine will be able to understand its its stairs. So basically, what's happening is it takes uh, you know the the uh, you know clear ones on the top and which is what you know the, the, basically in this one they are taking one two and uh, one here so it, uh, if you look at, in simple terms if you put some uh, filters in there which makes some of the properties of that picture very clear and that's called a convolution and there is something called pooling as well so pooling is basically uh, compressing it so in this case it takes uh, you know the, you got a, a, a a, you know a pixel there about four pixel in that one the highest number is 192 it takes from there so it it takes what is very important in, in this one you might have seen like in in music terms this is just taking some of the noises from that music so um, uh, some if you take some of the if you are into music you can see there are some uh, when they are recording, there are some things you can goes up and down. That is making some of the music, some of the notes in there very clear. And it, this is exactly the same thing happening, but in pictures. And pooling is just compressing it. Just like in music's case also, you can have MP3s, which is quite new. And before that, there was WMN, those kind of things, which was quite heavy. So what's happening here is, uh, you know, it takes the, 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 the important property of a pixel and makes you know, makes it small because this is machine learning. You want to make it as fast as possible. Uh, if you have a bigger picture, it's going to become very, very difficult for the machine, uh, you know, to work on it. And uh, these two things are basically making that image manageable by a small machine or, you know, a, a big machine if the, 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 the data is more. In this case, actually, this was the simplest game I can get <laughs> to make, uh, you know, uh, to explain about it. And this is a pooling example, and you, and uh, yeah, you can see uh, when once it is pooled, you know this this is actually one uh, uh, you know uh, one fiftieth size of this one on what you see on the right. But if you look at that, it hasn't lost much. Dad. Yeah. Our delivery is almost here. All right. Okay. In front of our house. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much, honey. So, uh, can you put on to your screen, please? Yeah. So I'm going. Are we going to get that uh, our delivery? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hang in. You are on the screen, I think. Yeah. Uh, your screen is being shared. Your yeah? screen is being shared. Yeah. Can you, can you zoom it? Um, yes. Speak about it. I can see it's coming. Yeah, so. Each. So basically now what's happening now, that is my biscuit coming in, uh, but um, because there's a car in that driveway coming. So Lumbai, I think we seem to have lost you. Yeah, I think when they go out, See, probably the Wi-Fi signal has lost. Them, so yeah. yeah, it has come back. It has come back. Um, okay. Okay. Shall I? So no. Uh, I can't see actually. Um, Rubas, can you see the screen? I am seeing a, a, a frozen screen. Yeah, I am also seeing a frozen screen, but I think for an understanding, you can see that there is a robot on the right of that van. Uh, I hope once Salam Bhai joins, yeah, he's there now. Oh.
perhaps some social distancing from salam bhai could possibly be or just a loss of signal online but i think i, I think uh, what we saw there was uh, an ai driven one robot that made its way to uh, salam bhai's residence with the uh, items that he had ordered i guess that was what uh, we're going to witness uh um, i there you go um can you see the screen yes now we can now we can okay. so now we just need to put the app and open it up i don't know why it is not coming to the house yet it's uh, i think we see, we got a naughty one today it's 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 not salam, good. salam bhai covid measures covid measures <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know what it is i think it's got a punctured tire i don't know but <laughs> <laughs> we pick it up now yeah so so I'm just share the screen switch to the app salam bhai just for everyone's benefit can you please tell us what's the distance it has traveled uh it's just traveled probably about uh 2 miles can i run see my screen now we yeah, can. we can yeah go yes, on sir. yeah so i'm just going to say that i'm next to the robot and then click the unlock button and then quickly switch back and you can oh, see here's your delivery it yeah. just oh no hang on there you go so yeah so you can say <laughs> <laughs> and then once you've closed it yeah. you go back to the app and that's my um, wait system. once we're back up on the app we can just send the robot away Ooh. thank you what is hang on that's there you go and once it's shut and i've told it to go away it will drive off in a minute uh Okay guys. Let's back to the supermarket now. Yeah. So you can <laughs> see my biscuit in the my digestive biscuits. Can you see me now? Yeah, we can. You have you might have to move away behind. Sorry, so here is my biscuit which I was I've ordered and that, that was complete that that uh, you know <laughs> that machine can you hear me now? Yeah, we can, we can. Okay. Loud and clear. So yeah, so uh, that that is a, a typical example of what a can do and and that's been used uh, you know heavily here especially during i mean it used to be about 15 to 20 minutes for us to deliver it because of the covid i think pretty much everybody is using it these days uh because you know they don't want to go <laughs> go to the supermarket and this is a perfect way of uh, you know ordering things and getting in in uh, in in few minutes uh, without uh, you know going to anybody or touching anything so yeah pooling example so basically pooling it was uh, just to go back it just a compression uh, idea and uh, now let me just uh, go back to the uh, to the program it was running so we got about 33 percentage in the accuracy in the beginning now you can see it's about 82 percentage accuracy so and it is it's only done for iterations on that model so we started with just 34 percentage you can see it's accuracy so if i put what it is saying 82% it means if i put a, a upload a picture or just show like that in front of a camera it is very likely to say it's a rock there's an 82% chance it's to say a rock whereas if i put like that it will say a, a paper and again there's about 86% you're going to get it right so you, let us see you know by by do 
um, it is doing, this is fourth iteration, it's a fifth iteration. So if we do, uh, and there are 25 iterations, they can, you know, we, I have programmed it to go. So by 25, I'm pretty sure it will be more than 90%. So you can see it is 86 percentage now, 93 percentage. So, you know, it, it kind of keeps on increasing. I hope you got the idea behind it. So if it is not clear, please, you know, I can go back and explain a little bit more. Is that, is that at least you got an idea about it? Anamsit? Yeah? Or? Sorry, just coming out of mute. Yes, that, that was really clear. And uh, I think the concepts came out really well. Okay, cool. So, okay, so in this one, I have used, you know, in, in that programming is um, basically one something called the TensorFlow. It's an open source uh, from uh, Google and, and uh, the, the, the programming language is called Py uh, is Python. And TensorFlow has good loads of pre, um, uh, pre-trained algorithms you can get. So if you want to create something out of that, there, there are loads of hundreds of uh, you know, people who has, uh, as a community has created pre-trained algorithms in there about hearing like, you know, something like Alexa or, uh, or uh, Google, um, Google Home. You can get those kind of pre-trained algorithms in there and you can build up on the top of that with, the, with the whatever you want to do. And as I, as I have shown, there was 80, 840 images uploaded onto that and you have put in convolution there, which is basically in simple terms, applying filters and you apply pooling on that, which is basically just compressing that, um, uh, that picture without losing much of the information there, basically removing the noise out of that picture. And you can see something called uh, create some, do something called PyCharm. Uh, instead of that, uh, you know, that tool I was using that, that this is basically called a, this one is called a Jupyter Notebook. So if you go search for Jupyter Notebook, you can get something similar and you can write your own code in there. And this is uh, something called CoLab and, and the, um, you know, you can uh, Salam, are you sharing a, a screen with Jupyter Notebook or just a presentation? No, I was sh uh, sharing. Oh, okay. So yeah, you're not sharing. Yeah, okay. Okay. No, I was sharing that. So I, I think I, uh, we, I, I, we can't I, see that. Yeah. You can't. Okay. Uh, what I'll do is I'll stop share. I think I was sharing the, the slide rather than the screen. So I'll share the screen. Okay, so you have, when I say 85% interval, you haven't seen my screen? Uh, no, no, I think. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was showing the screen there. Okay, so let me just go back. Sorry about that. <clears throat> because I was uh, sharing the window. So can you see my program screen now? Can you see my? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. So you can see we have started with the 34 percentage accuracy on that, and now we can see 94, 90 percentage. What that means is, if I show a, a you know a rock in front of the camera, or if I upload a picture of a, a rock, it's gonna say it's a rock. If I hold my hands like that, there's a 93 percentage accurate uh, chance it's gonna get it right. That's what it is saying. And if you look at that, it's kind of learning by itself. So I'm, I haven't touched anything after that. I just put that um, in a code in there and asked you to learn about it. This is you know, exactly the same concept as I said, you, know, you are put in front of, uh, you know, um, there's a girl in India, isn't it, Bindu, is that right? Uh, who's the, the badminton champion? And uh, you, know, you are asked to play with her and win. And you know what your destination is, what the outcome is, and you have given the tool as well. From there, <laughs> there is no choice. You just have to learn and learn and learn and, and beat uh, uh, Bindu, I think. Is that right? Bindu, Bindu P, I think? The, the Batman Sorry, champion. it is Sindhu. Sindhu, yeah, Sindhu, yeah. <clears throat> okay, but now let me just calm down a little bit because I know it was probably <laughs> a little bit too much. Um, is it relevant? Why should I bother about it? I mean, you have seen in action, which is why I wanted you to see. So I have ordered something and I haven't moved much. It was in front of my house. It was delivered just over there. And, uh, you know, it's used in healthcare, which, uh, you know, I'm sure, pretty sure there will be people talking about it. There is fraud detection. And this is quite important in our case, uh, whereas, uh, you know, when I 
in my work, uh, you know, this been used up to a level. So basically, if there is a, some, it's it's not kind of what's happening in traditional ways is if there is an IT system, if it is attacked, it's kind of reactive. Nowadays, it's not reactive. It's kind of look at you know where the day, uh, the hit is coming from. In you know, if it is from North Korea. Uh, there is a good chance it will be monitored all the way through and see or uh, you know if it is two o'clock in the morning about from a university about five people coming in that kind of it will be all there will be something called suspicious transaction is coming in so it, that transaction will be all monitored all the way through and if there is something happening so there will be an extra pair of eyes on that these are all, all happening today and the more it's getting more and more uh, you know sophisticated and everybody is about you know worried about the fraud and the security of their systems and there is sentiment and analysis which i was uh, you know speaking earlier about you know the, the thumbs up and thumbs down and those kind of things which i don't really get my head around in, in facebook i have spoken to facebook but i'm not a fan of facebook military there is another uh, you know area which is um, which as i said unfortunately uh, you know uh, going in a real fast and um, and the e-commerce e-commerce actually if you remember the story i started with about the you know um, the baby item and it, it's already happening every and this would be touching every aspect of our life whether we like it or not you know in one day or if it is not already is it, it is i mean if i say from here now and say uh, alexa light on can you see? Alexa, light off. Uh, we cannot see the, uh, uh, the light, uh, Salam. Uh, we are seeing, uh, are you sharing the, are you sharing the, uh, no, the camera? On his, on his spotlight. Yeah, ah. spotlight. Can you have it? Okay, Alexa, light on. Okay. Alexa, light off. Okay. Did you see? Yeah, that's visible, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, uh, that's what I was saying. You know, every aspect of life, you know, we will be. Um, this will be touched, uh, and you know, uh, that that thing which I spoke, uh, uh, that Alexa, which was only about thirty pounds, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's kind of coming. Uh, the the price has coming down as well every time. And obviously, my little friend, you just have seen. We call him in this in my house. We call it. Uh, the boy uh, it's kind of really really cute i have seen people passing this is the house in uh, sorry this is the road in front of uh, my house and i have seen when people going past they stop the car and and take a picture of it because it's kind of cute as well uh, and uh, one thing i have noticed is actually when my brother's son came he, he stood in front of that uh, that uh, uh, that machine for about few minutes a uh, few seconds and he said uh, please uh, move and uh, what, what is yeah please move in from from front of me because i have a, too many things to deliver today and that that thing nobody is talking nobody is asking him to uh, you know to say that what's happening is it kind of works out it's a little boy and he doesn't want to be rude and it says actually something like i think uh, my friend i think my friend could you could you please move from from front of me i got a lot of things to deliver so there are lo there are you know but tons of cameras around it kind of works out in way it knows my address and it put all the things from and if you look at the the shop in there you can see it's queuing up in front of the queue uh, in front of the shop and it's really nice it's quite uh, you know uh, kind of cute i would say and uh, yeah this is one uh, aspect of you know what's happening you know in in this field i hope you liked that um, that delivery thing and that and the biscuit story and so what is next? Uh, the simple answer is I don't really know uh, because you know uh, this can go exponential. But what I can say for sure is actually this this way, this is to stay. This uh, you know the robotics and uh, you know uh, the machine learning and the AI will only grow in next few years. And uh, what is it going to disrupt? Can it, can somebody tell me what this is? Just one. I mean, even the moderators, you can you can shout and and say. The chandelier. That's I no IBM supercomputer. Ah okay. <laughs> Close. It's Somebody said it's a chandelier. It's not a chandelier. It looks like a chandelier in a masjid or something. It's not. A new, a new deep learning um, sort of device or something. 
<laughs> it is, it's something called it's not from IBM it's from Google it's a quantum computer okay? I think Mr. Zakiria has just pointed to that it's a quantum computer yeah you got it Zakiria has got it well done Zakir yeah. okay well done okay. it's a quantum computer so basically I, this is just like we created the first computer I mean it was about as big as my, this room when it was originally created and this will become smaller and this if it comes in it's going to disrupt everything in the, it means actually it, it will be a game changer. And uh, what I would like to say about this one, it's not a natural progression from a, uh, you know, a computer, a normal computer to a, a, a you know, much more powerful computer. What's happening now is uh, there is something called parallelism happening. We, we always say, you know, uh, there is multi-threaded programming. So basically you ask one thread to do, do something. And, you know, after some time, you're going to catch that thread and say, there is something called um, what do you call um, uh, map reduce, which is uh, you know used in in, uh, uh, in basically in um, data mining. So what's happening is um, you know there will be load load, load of data. You, can yeah. I can I briefly interrupt you? I think can we yeah. wind up in five minutes? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is the last one. This is the last right. one. Thank you. So um, you know. Uh, so in parallelism, although we say, you know, it, it, we are running the program in parallel, it's not actually happening in parallel. What's happening is it's just multiple cores. You just split that job into multiple streams and kind of join it together and, and take it in. What this does is actually real parallelism. So just to give you an example, you have eight cards, you know, put across the table, uh, you know, face down. And you are asked to pick up, uh, you know, um, Joker from that. What in traditional programming happens is actually you flip one and look at that. If it is not Joker, you put it back. You take that next one and go by. Uh, and that's called sequential programming. Okay. And that's what is happening today. But once this is coming in, what happens is actually it's going to flip that eight of them at the same time and flip it back at the same time. So it can be in two positions at the same time. It can be a zero and a one and anything in between. It's, it's, it's something called a qubits and it's a very difficult concept to understand. So if you, if you understood quantum physics, then you will understand what, what a quantum uh, uh, quantum machine is. And if this comes in all the security we have, which we call it uh, TLS, which is uh, transport layer security, they are all will be disrupted. I mean, if, uh, if you try to break into a TLS now with the, with the current technology, it can take probably up to 20 years to get it with a random hit. But if you have one of these, it will only take seconds to break into that. So it's a scary thought, but uh, you know, but by that time, hopefully everything will change with that. Uh, so just to, to, uh, to kind of compare this one, if you take a candle and a light bulb, uh, this is that kind of a progression. So light bulb is not, a, you know, both gives the light, but it's not a natural, uh, light bulb is not a natural progression from a candle. And this is similar to that. So, uh, you know, the uh, quantum computer is not a, na a natural, you know, uh, progression from a uh, from a, a normal computer to a, to a quantum computer. So these are some of the resources um, you know I have used, and uh, you know, I, and obviously you can obviously use Google and find out a bit more in there. And I'm I'm going to stop with this one. There is this is um, Ronald Rumsfeld. I don't quite like the guy because he was part of the you know in Bush administration in America, and uh, he was uh, quite. Um, instrumental in uh, in the Iraq war, but I like his quote. This is one of his quotes. He says, um, uh, somebody's kind of uh, putting his hand over that so I can't read. There are something called known, known. These are the things we know and we know, we know that we know about it. This is just like I'm speaking to you, the glass of water and we know there is a glass of water. So it, it's known, known. And there are something called known, unknown. That is to say there are things we know but at least we know we don't know. <laughs> that is about the universe, for example. We know that the universe is vast and you know, big, but we don't really know much about it. But at least we know we don't know about it. But there is the next thing. There are things which are known as unknown unknowns. That is, this is pretty, pretty, you know, bad. There are things we don't know, and at least we don't even know we don't know about it. <laughs> and uh, that's and that is probably the area where this I will you know, come and show, okay, there is nothing called the unknown unknown. At least we know about it is unknown. 
with that i'm uh, with that i'm stopping uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, i hope uh, and uh, it made some sense out of the so uh, what I'm, i was saying as it said in the beginning i don't think i can change uh, everybody's perspective within him never but if i say you know one person if i can inspire one person out of this um, you know one hour i think uh, you know I, i will be pleased by that with that i'm stopping uh, thank you very much for your time and i'm happy to take any questions yeah um salam um that was uh, absolutely wonderful um and i i'm sure everybody will agree um that was um, that was really uh you know thought provoking uh interactive interesting uh, with, with, with the live show uh, and uh, i think most of the audience have already picked up that most of your life is built around ai they picked up your alexa they've seen your tesla in the background um you know <laughs> and they already picked up on that and they also saw the robotics and and also the your your whole passion about automation so so great um that, that was super informative uh, i think we can go on to the next uh, session of uh, q&a and the way we're going to do the q&a is to start off uh, with a question to salam regarding his presentation a, a quick 10 minutes because we have we have over on for time so a quick 10 minutes two or three questions we can take quickly around AI, and then we'll go to our panelists because there are quite a few uh, panelists over here. So to introduce this um, uh, Q and A session, um, I like to uh, welcome um, Mr. Rubas. Uh, Rubas is um, Rubas and Mr. Namshid. These are two moderators for the Q and A. Hopefully, the Q and A will be about forty forty five minutes. Uh, we are aware of the time. So our first uh, panelist is Rubas. Rubas has also been a host, and he is one of our live wires in our Excel UK, who is a civil engineer by background. He's one of the clever civil engineers who did his um, bachelor's in um, in NIT and uh, went to do his um, uh, master's in construction technology and management from IIT Delhi. So he is an IITian. So he's no mean guy. He's been 18 years in the construction industry. He focuses on project project controls management, and also he's also involved actively in training, teaching, and is a STEM ambassador. STEM is science, technology, engineering, maths, ambassador, supporting teachers and young people. So Rubas will be one of our main um, uh, moderators. And I'd also like to introduce Namshit. Uh, Namshit uh, Hashim is an IT consultant specializing in software testing and quality assurance, primarily in the telecom domain. And he has worked for British Telecom, uh, Vodafone, Ericsson, Nokia, 3UK, and Cable and Wireless. Um, and is also ISAB and ITIL V3 certified. um so both of them are uh, around about london and um, so i'll uh, i i like to welcome um, uh, them to the panel and i just like to introduce the q and a session uh, like i said we'll start off with salam's questions just a few and then we'll go on to our panelists we will have the moderator's questions for the panelists and then we can try to answer most of your questions um so we'll try to do to that as quick as possible you're aware salam's talk was so interesting and informative um that it uh, over and by a bit so over to you um namshit and and rubas Okay, sorry about overrunning it. But as I, you know, as I said, it's not um, you know. <laughs> no, I think uh, to be fair, I think it was exciting, and I even even a, even a non uh, IT guy, a medic like me, enjoyed it. So that was very very good. You know. Okay, you can see uh, you know that the receipt for uh, you know the 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 items has been already uh, emailed to us. You can see the my biscuit in there <laughs> in the phone. So yeah, this is how it is working these days, guys. It's uh, you know. <laughs> Okay, great. Uh, so, Rubas and Namshit, over to you guys. Yeah, thank you, Doctor Riaz. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, so, over to Mr. Salam. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think one question, uh, a simple question, I will ask is: Do you think an AI can beat a human intelligence? Wow. <laughs> uh, my answer is no, uh, because human intelligence uh, is it just it's not comparable. I, I, when I was showing the picture in, in the beginning. when i say can you say which one is a shoe within milli not even a millisecond you know it's a fraction of a millisecond you know there are there are two shoes in there but for a computer to work out it is you know it going to be quite difficult but it's going to get faster but that is not the thing i'll give you an example i i'm saying i like mom, my mom more than my dad so you can't just computerize it <laughs> yeah so uh, because com- for for computer to understand it should be definable okay and there are lots of things which we uh, n- uh, have uh, th- there are people kind of you know this is my personal view yeah uh, there are people say now it will it will have it can beat human being these are specialized machine which can do one thing 
And I, I'll give you an example. So the AI machine, the deep um, uh, alpha go, when they were playing with the uh, KG, if there was a fire in that, uh, in that building, KG will run, but the alpha go will not. Though it is very, very clever, it can only do one thing. And also the emotions, you know, um, um, in my case, actually, I wasn't a you know, very good dude. I, I like, uh, I like uh, you know, what Maya be more than Capiche, <laughs> for example. I mean, they are the only characters I know. So how would you, how would you define it to a computer? It's, it's impossible. So the brain, my dear friend, we are just underestimating what, you know, what a brain is. It is an amazing, amazing, amazing machine. And uh, you can't compare with anything. So uh, yeah, the answer is no. Okay. Namshit, are we having any more questions coming up? Uh, I have a question and it's, a, it's my per personal question. It's okay. mainly because uh, I think Sanaba is the expert on this. Um, are there any organization or body that ensures the ethical background of AI. For example, can AI ever make a fair decision? Uh, this is a much, much debated uh, you know, area at the moment. There isn't a body specifically on that. In, in, in the UK, there is the information commission and they will always look at, especially on the medical field. You know, and there are, there are I mean, I'll give you an example. So if it's, uh, uh, you know, um, in, in uh, robotics, uh, you know, people were, sorry, in, uh, in military, people were saying, you know, you, you can send a, a, a machine to fight. And, you know, the problem there is, you know, the machine is going and there is a, a little ball with a stick. Yeah. And this machine, and that stick might look like a gun, the, the, but the machine is actually, it can't take a, a you know, it, it's only asked to, to target something which it finds to be threat, uh, threatening. And there's a good chance that boy will be, uh, you know, that little child will get killed. So it is, it is you know, the mo there is a big moral dilemma in all these areas. And also in, 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 when you go to a doctor, there is something called an empathy that the, the, when the doctor touches and speak to you, uh, there is an effect, uh, you know, I, I think Riaz can uh, explain it more when somebody touches onto you, there are things, you know, uh, some hormones, uh, you know, secreted and it makes you feel better, even if the drug doesn't. Whereas if you go to a machine and put your hands into something and say, okay, you have a blood pressure, uh, that connection is missing. So there is, uh, I mean, there will be a body, surely, in, in you know, in coming, uh, coming time, but uh, for the time, it is mainly done by the uh, you know, information commissioners and everywhere uh, it is, uh, uh, it is a, it, basically the IT team. But there is obviously a, a moral dilemma in all of these things. Yeah. Uh, okay. There is another thank question. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Salam, can I, can I just come in on that? On, on the ethical aspects, I think there's a question yeah. on the ethical aspects. I think, um, you know, the um, Rubas was going to touch on it. And, you know, in the healthcare field, there's a lot of discussion about AI. And, um, you know, I'm also actually going to get involved in one of these projects. There, is this, there, is, there are serious ethical, um, you know, um, considerations here, because when it comes to privacy, data, you know, data privacy, and then, you know, that sort of information, you know, your body is your body, what are you doing with it? The brain is going to deal with it. So there are a lot of, lot of ethical issues. And in fact, um, you know, there is an ethical body around AI that's been developed in the United Kingdom to look at these, uh, these, these factors and, and, you know, and then watch the space. Because, um, you know, if, you're, if you have a robot doing an operation somewhere in America for a patient who's, um, you know, who, who's being operated remotely, you know, somewhere in England, there, there are areas around, you know, the laws, not only the ethics, the laws around different countries, around surgery. So it is, it is quite a very, very complex area, you know, it when is. it comes to that. And, uh, you know, I think because we just start of AI, and we have a lot of medics and doctors now interested in AI, you know, develop these sort of services. So like most things, you start somewhere and then you get there and you actually learn as you go. So I think that's what, what, what AI is about, isn't it? And I think there's a question here, Salam, for you from ethical point of view. Sorry, I'm Rubas, I'm just gonna ask the question why I'm in the ethical case. So we AI can manipulate information as did in the last US election and create fake images, thus creating a serious ethical issue. So how is AI affecting human relations and con uh, relations with countries, you know, so Salam, uh, you know, there's a question there. So, sorry, can you just uh, refresh? Is, uh, AI can manipulate information as, you know, did in the last US elections 
<laughs> and create fake images and fake news. Yes. So it creates yes. serious yeah. ethical issue and there is political. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this is quite a hot topic. So basically what's happening these days, including in India. So what's happening in these days is actually not. So in Trump's case, what's happening is he's playing with the media. So he look at, there are teams of people who look at the social media and just to extract what is coming loud and clear of that. So there will be billions of data fed into a system and find out that, you know, what is the kind of um, uh, expression or uh, what do you call, uh, if it is uh, anger or, you know, what is coming out, what is loud from that? So they get, you know, these millions of ideas, everybody is seeing actually how oh, the current, in, you know, the, the health system is really bad. Then the people, although they might support it or not support it, they will go with that, what is coming loud out of, out of that, um, that study of of the people i mean th th this is talking about you know millions of people so and this is exactly what's happening in india too then based on that you make the policy which is not always going to be in the interest of the people if you get what i mean so look look at the data extract it and put and put some data scientist on it and just make models out of it and say, you know, everybody is seeing there need to be a wall and there, there is a big problem between uh, the, the, the immigration coming in. That doesn't necessarily be the correct choice. If, and also not everybody is using that. The people who is, unfortunately, the people using this uh, kind of systems and shouting about it are actually the angry people. So what you get out of this is and not always the right one, which is you know what's happening in uh, USA uh, about the the migration and not only USA around the world, including the, in in the in the UK, the migration is not a problem for majority, but the people who you know who has some problem, they will always go to a, 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 a you know because they are already angry, they will always go to a system like Facebook or or Twitter to to say that I'm, I'm angry about it, and yeah the politicians actually they personally might not agree with that but unfortunately they go with the flow and and that which is exactly what is happening in, in you around the world at this point and which is sad because it might not be the interest of the people but interest of the the few who is angry about it thank you thank you salam bhai uh, you know before we go to the panelists there is one more question i understand there are a lot of questions floating around maybe some of the questions can be answered during the panelist session. Uh, there is one question which was asked in the beginning. Uh, it is about someone has launched a Masjid One project, which is designed to connect all the mosques across India. And this is going to focus on education, healthcare, microfinance, healthcare, women empowerment, and there are civil rights, etc. So they are querying how they can use AI for this project. For AI to work with, to start with, you have you have to have abundance of data. Okay, so if you are looking at you know just starting with it, don't start with AI. <laughs> Get the data first, <clears throat> because when if you the machine learning, if I when I if I when I show that the graph initially, you have seen you know one husband asking their uh, his wife, by by next month you will be having twenty four uh, husbands. And in the Masjid case, that, that is the, the what is going to happen. You only will have a linear graph. And what I would say is actually don't don't look at the AI yet. If you have a you know wealth of data from different masjids, different uh, you know, communities, uh, different kind of masjids. I mean, you know, in, in, obviously in India you have uh, you know uh, Sunnis, Mujahid, and this and that and all of that. You come together and you, if you then you have a wealth of data that is gold mine. You are sitting on a gold mine. Okay, then. You can put, uh, you know, machine learning and, and deep learning and all to that, and then make some, you know, some predictive data out of that. But don't start with that. I would say. Is there a predictive time scale for this kind of, you know, uh, project? It really you know? depends upon how quickly you can get the data. You know, uh, if you have you know, less than five gig of data, don't even consider it. Sorry, uh, not uh, sorry, not five gig, five, five. Um, TV. Five, five TV. Maybe. 5 TB of data, yeah. Okay. If you don't have 5 TB of data, don't even consider it. 
Th thank uh, you very much, Salam Bhai. Uh, uh, I think... Salam, just, uh, Ruba, just one, one last question to Salam because uh, a lot of people have asked this question around AI. Uh, and after that, we can wind up the AI session, sorry, the Salam session, and then we go to that. See, a lot of people are asking about, they are interested in doing AI, yeah? Uh, and one of the questions is, where do they start from, number one, studying about AI? Number two, are there any online courses or other courses about AI? Salam. Yeah, online courses. I mean, uh, see, if you look at the YouTube and uh, if you search for AI, there are some really, really, I mean, there are some doji ones, obviously. But if you look for AI and look at uh, specifically from Google and Microsoft and uh, and obviously um, Boston Dynamics, that's another one. They are in the robotics. And look at that, you know, search, definitely search for, you know, artificial intelligence. But from that, filter the one you think is, uh, you know, uh, kind of responsible, like Google, uh, Microsoft, and that would be a good start. And there is a, 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 a portal called Udemy, U, U D E M Y. And if you look at that, yeah, um, you can get uh, a course for about nine pounds and sometimes the I mean, register with that first uh, you know, you, you, if it is uh, you know quite expensive don't buy it at that time but then there will be sale on most of them it, that will come to 10 pounds in the uk most of the time about nine pounds and at that time buy it then you can keep it forever and that is a good place to you uh, to look and there is something called uh, another one called the uh, linux academy is pretty good and they have some courses on AI as well but you know, if you are starting, start with the YouTube. YouTube is a very good place, and uh, you know, if you search for Go in Google itself, there are some uh, really good books which Google them themselves wrote about this one, which you can read in you know, a half of it online itself without paying any money. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are the some places I would say, and obviously you can search Google and 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 have a look at some of that, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, some of the uh, white papers which they publish. Okay, thank you, Salam Bhai. I think it's time that we move on to the other experts. We have experts on various fields. So like uh, Dr. Ria said, our goal is to maximize uh, your understanding on these subjects within the uh, time frame we have got. And I'm very sure the, all, that uh, all of our panelists will agree uh, that there is no such thing as a silly question. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, I would like to introduce our first panelist, Mr. Siad Kandambilakil. He's a data specialist with 16 years of industry experience uh, after his master's in computer applications. He has worked with renowned companies like Sony PlayStation, SSC Energy, Hiscox Insurance, Asher's Law Firm, Veolia, Nogin Pharmaceuticals. And uh, he is also an IBM certified developer and has dabbled with mentoring and teaching in the past. Uh, so Mr. Siad, for the benefit of a non-IT person like me and others who are new to this field, uh, can you please tell us what is a data science? Thank you, Rubas. I hope uh, you can hear me uh, well. Yeah, that's audible. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a, a good question, and uh, it's very tricky to answer as well because uh, if you go through uh, the definition of uh, um, data science, you can see um, different um, from a one-liner to a complex um, definition. Well, one of the best definition I have seen is from Casey Kozikov. Um, she she is a um, uh, chief uh, decision scientist in Google. It's a one-liner, actually. She says, um, data science is the discipline of making data useful. So in that way, um, whether it's a data is, whether you should, if your data is small or big, if you can make it useful uh, uh, through some process or some disciplines, that's, that's AI. Sorry, uh, that's data science. But if you look at a bit more, uh, you can see many uh, pillars in it. Uh, some of them like data mining, uh, machine learning, um, like NLP, natural language processing, uh, statistics, uh, and mathematics and visualizations as well. So sometimes you don't use all of these. Uh, sometimes you use some of these. Um, does that make sense? Rubas? It does. It does. Which actually uh, kind of takes us to the next 
uh, equation to this, the research. Uh, let me share my screen again. And uh, I would like to introduce Dr. Azim Shah Tachampoil, who is uh, a PhD computer science, who has done his PhD computer science at the University of Hertfordshire, and who has also uh, got his master's degree in electronics at QSAT. He has got an electronics and computer science background with experience in, mainly in industry and research. And uh, his PhD research was in rehabilitation robotics, um, and which was involved in exploring the adaptation of human and robot interaction systems based on muscle fatigue. And he has published few international conference and journal papers in the field of human robot interactions, signal processing, and machine learning. So Dr. Azim, uh, as with the recent outbreak, uh, I can understand there is definitely a spotlight. Let me change the spotlight to you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you please comment about the current research, mainly in the field of robotics and AI in medical applications? I understand Dr. Riaz was also kind of uh, interested, and part of it might be answered by uh, Mr. Salam, but uh, can you please put your thoughts onto it? Uh, you're on mute. Azim, you're on mute. Uh, Robert, maybe can you yeah, let, I'm just, yeah. come back yeah. if it takes longer? Dr. Azim, can you please try now? Can you hear me, oh, can you, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, it is audible. It is no, audible. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't able to unmute myself. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks for giving this opportunity. So basically, I understand the, the question is regarding the the robotics and AI in the med medical applications, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, some part of this has already been addressed by uh, Dr. Yas and others. So, uh, in short, uh, this is really a kind of uh, you know peak research area where the robotics uh, which is actually a hardware counterpart of AI being used in medical applications. Uh, the, the, area which I, the area which I've been working on is uh, rehabilitation robotics. So what I've come across is the various universities currently into the usability of technology which makes use of the AI algorithms and so on. Uh, for example, uh, in association with the hardware technology like haptic sensations, virtual environments, uh, technologies using AR and VR products, uh, there are uh, equipments which uh, makes use of the, uh, the signals uh, originating from human body. For example, the electromyograms, which are coming from the muscular uh, patterns and electroencephalogram signals, that is EEG and ECG signals, and the equipments which are uh, variable to uh, a patient, for example, these signals can be used to adapt the training environments and so on. So there are, it's, it's a huge research area. So uh, recently I've come across devices which are really like, uh, you can wear it like a, a watch, and you can, you can just make use of this device to like, you know, access uh, a game. So this is something which can be used for training a stroke patient, for example. So if you need to uh, give uh, continuous repetitions of training for stroke rehabilitation, where people need to move their hands continuously over different, uh, you know, intervals and for many days and so on. So we don't have to really get the assistance, the physical assistance from a therapist. Instead, they can uh, equip this device in their home, the patient's home, and this device can be remotely monitored by a therapist. That means here we are reducing the need of a physical presence and we are better, better making use of the, the, the expertise by the therapist, actually. So what's, happen, what's gonna happen in this scenario is that the device, maybe in this case, you can say it's a robot. This robot assists him to perform many repetitions in an in a adaptive way. 
uh, the robot can understand how the patient performs and the robot can uh, modify its assistance based on its learning. So the AI uh, program will be running in the robotic uh, controller. So these are all like uh, some sample use cases. There are plenty of various other things which many people here will be already aware of. So this is in short, actually. So does, does it answer the question? Part of it, yes, uh, Dr. Azim. And I'm very sure there will be a few more questions coming into the chat yes, room. Add on to that, uh, you know, I was watching a video. So, so in your hand, the prosthetic hand, actually, there is a big, um, uh, you know, um, research going on. Actually. The problem is actually when people with the prosthetic hands, if they take on for example, like glass, there's a good chance it's going to break because we can do this and we take this for granted. And a robotic arm to do like that, that is 10 years of research. And this is what somebody's question was asking earlier, actually, whether it can beat our brain. Absolutely not. Because just doing this, we take for granted. And, you know, as I said, it takes years of uh, programming to do that. So when you are take, picking something, for example, if you are taking a, a glass, you put a certain but, uh, set of pressure in there. But if you are taking a hammer, a sledgehammer, you put a, a different pressure on there. If you have a prosthetic hand, it doesn't have sensors on that, you know, initially. But uh, that, uh, that I, that's what I was talking about. So these, <clears throat> what they have done is they put some sensors on that. Then if you touch on that, it will understand it's a glass or it's a sledgehammer. And based on that, it adjusts the pressure on your hand. So it has got individual fingers and you can take on that. And that is a, a really interesting area for me as well, because if you think about it, it's, it's really, really amazing. What and Then only you would understand, you know, what, what our brain is, what's happening. At, and when that is, the, you know, the brain will still have some, information going through then they will put a chip in there so that chip will uh, you know the, the problem the good thing is actually in our case the the message is very very feeble it, it, the machine can't hear it and they have to amplify it to amplify it then they'll just move the hands just in, in a chip so that's an, an interesting area in the medical field this uh, prosthetic limbs and, and yeah, in, uh, uh, salam I come in there i think uh, <laughs> rehabilitation medicine yeah. is a process of brain learning you know, talk about machine learning, the brain itself is learning from the various neurons for rehabilitation. That's why when you, when you get paralyzed on one side, your brain constantly learns, your brain cells and neurons constantly learn about the process. So imagine that the brain cells are already learning, and then now you've got a computer to do it via deep learning. So that's why it's such a complex process. It looks very simple to the common man, but because I've got an interest in rehabilitation, and the, it's very, very complex. And uh, people are developing prosthetic limbs, it takes about 15, 20 years for nerve regeneration. But things may change. Computer may learn, the brain may learn. The brain needs to learn first to let the computer learn, if you know what I mean. Yeah? So uh, it is a very, very interesting area. So I think, um, thanks, Salam. That's, that's very useful. And I think, over to Rubas for the next person. Yeah, uh, thanks for the wonderful insight, uh, Salam Bhai and Riyaska. Uh, you know, I think that is what uh, Dr. Azim touched upon. You know, and I think it was one of his PhD re research also, was in uh, rehabilitation robotics. Uh, so I would like to move on to our uh, next moderator, uh, Mr. Namshit. Uh, Mr. Namshit, can you please unmute yourself and introduce our other panelists? Yeah, thank you, Rubash. Uh, Rubash, could you bring back the, uh, the slide, please? Okay, um, I'd like to introduce uh, Mujib uh, Parambat. So Mujib is a software development manager who has uh, specialized in uh, automotive applications and worked in the industry for over 20 years. Uh, he's done his engineering, uh, master's of engineering automotive in electronics from Germany and uh, is a graduate in engineering in electronics. Uh, Mujib is responsible for uh, some various uh, time critical application development within the automotive domain and uh, with key interest in AI-based uh, computed vision application, uh, such as uh, the mirrorless car, uh, which is going to be uh, the next big thing in, in the automotive industry. So uh, Mujib, I've got two questions for you. Uh, the first one yeah. is, what is computer vision? Okay, uh, I'll, um, this is just continuation of uh, Salams. Can, can, can you hear me uh, right now? 
Yeah, yeah, okay, you're good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, see, this is just a continuation of what uh, Salam has said. Uh, you might have uh, remember what Salam said in many places about um, uh, AI playing with images, videos, etc. So normally, a computer see an image uh, just a set of pixels. Uh, it cannot recognize whether it is a uh, whether it is a person or a thing or a whatever it is. So. computer vision is a, a part of the science a part of engineering where it says uh, uh, to make these pixels into into a meaningful uh, thing so uh, you can apply ai on top of uh, uh, computer vision so make it more and more uh, useful uh, also you can do uh, without uh, the ai so uh, it's like data and you know you can do data analysis as uh, siad said earlier that uh, you can Uh, work with on data without any ai but if you apply ai techniques uh, it gets more and more useful in the same way image can be processed uh, and used made useful without any ai um, uh, or if you apply ai it becomes more easier and you can do a lot of things so uh, uh, it is a uh, some of them salam has already uh, said about convolution and polling etc these are come uh, this will come as a part of uh, a uh, computer vision uh, so you if you learn more about the computer vision you can play with images and make sense i uh, just want to uh, show you uh, my screen and um, uh, give you some introduction uh, i'm sorry if this is a this involve a bit of coding so i don't know if uh, somebody who is not uh, uh, interested in uh, programming may see this a uh, bit boring but i just take you through this uh, So I wrote a recently a program uh, which is in the GitHub. You can go to the GitHub and uh, have a look on this. Uh, it is shared publicly. So in this, uh, if you run this uh, program, uh, this is uh, used to detect an age from a, a person's face. So uh, I used uh, OpenCV. Oh, this is OpenCV. Is um, if you go to the website, uh, you can see OpenCV here. This is uh, developed by Intel. it's available as a op open software uh, you can uh, use it uh, for uh, making a, a, a most of the image processing so if you want to detect um, uh, age from a person's face or uh, detect an emotion uh, uh, as earlier discussed you can also use google libraries which you just send the picture and get the uh, emotion back but you can do it yourself by using open cv uh this program is uh, purely uh, using a raspberry pi and open cv you can run it through i'm using some amazon library as well uh, into uh, into this so that is uh, purely just to give you a brief idea of uh, what is computer vision um so uh, thank you another question thank you Mujib, but that was that was a great insight into this. And uh, Namshid, let me just add something. I think maybe this is related to computer vision, but in the field of medicine, uh, what is happening is we are having the machines to learn our X chest, uh, the X-ray images, radiology images. Yeah, looking at the images. So what is happening? There's a trial going on in 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 England at the moment when the machine is we are putting a lot of normal X-rays, you know, chest X-ray, normal chest X-ray into the machine. and the machine is learning so they are having hundreds and thousands and thousands of images that has been put in now what is the application for this the application for this is once you put that machine in the computer normally what happens now it gets reported by a radiologist so what should happen is the computer should actually pick up a normal x ray so automatically so it actually helps us to do things very quickly that's just one i think not if it's computer vision but I, one of the applications of ai in healthcare i don't know if yeah, that's yeah that is that is a computer vision uh, uh, rias and uh, uh, the deep mind that is a uh, google product uh, what uh, uh, it beat the go player that salam said earlier uh, google has given um, a set of uh, x rays to uh, deep mind as well as a set of x rays to the radiologist and uh, it, this happened in january uh, the result was that uh, the deep mind robot picked up breast cancer more than what the doctors picked up so that is a you can see there is a news in bloomberg about that thank you mujib uh, namshit please continue yeah thank thanks for that insight uh, mujib i've got one more question for you um yeah. could you shed some light on how how does um artificial intelligence improve uh, computer vision applications yeah uh, as i said earlier uh 
the computer vision is making sense of the image or a video um, uh, for a computer rather than a pixel. And if you apply uh, uh, machine learning techniques, uh, it can um, improve uh, a lot of uh, uh, predictions. So for example, if um, uh, uh, Intel came out a new technology now. What it does is uh, maybe interested to robots as well. So uh, they run a, a drone through the bridges uh, and it can detect tracks on the bridges um, uh, up to a, a length of one millimeter size. So the drones through fly through the bridges and it can uh, scan the bridge structure. Uh, and if it does every three months or two months, it can uh, detect the change between two previous images and see any cracks uh, or any maintenance required. Uh, this will save a lot of uh, uh, manpower because uh, uh, detecting may be easier, but climbing to a, such a huge structure uh, maybe it, uh, takes time and a lot of, so, so Intel's uh, drone is available. You can see that uh, they're also published the report on that. So the, uh, what Intel does is they applied uh, the artificial intelligence and uh, uh, computer vision technology together and produced a, a software which can detect very, very small cracks on uh, buildings, bridges, and et cetera. So that is how the uh, AI use improve uh, the computer vision. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mojib Bhai, for that. Robas boy, can we go back to our uh, slide? So we got one more, one more yeah, to yeah. our next panelist. Okay, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Faisal KP. So Faisal is an electronics and communications engineer, currently working as Connected Autonomous uh, Vehicle, CAV, uh, leading actively in the uh, Innovate UK funded research projects in the area of smart connectivity and uh, digitalization, one of my favorite areas. Uh, he has very good experience in full life cycle of embedded systems development and is responsible for driving many strategic uh, initiatives in the automotive electronics, uh, including the development of solution accelerators for infotainment and telematics. Uh, Faisal, I've got two questions for you. Uh, the first one is uh, how will artificial intelligence intelligence uh, change the future in the area that you're working on. Uh, thanks, Rubas. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Uh, there's two can. questions, you know. Um, as you see now, this AI is happening very much. Of course, in near and, uh, you know, far future, the AI is going to be happen in much of the field, especially I can see that the health sector in educational and transport industry, the AI is going to be happening. And of course, that would be one of the, you know, immediate visible for us. As you know, Salami has already shown so many demonstrations how it is happening. It is really happening. And for me, or everybody, AI is not a new. If you look on many years ago, you know, when the market introduced a fully automated washing machine, that could be the first kind of uh, implementation of you know, the neural network in the industry. So that means AI is happening many years ago, it's gradually happening, but of course in some areas, you know, the AI is going to be happening very exponentially. Um, and as well as, you know, if you think about how it is affecting in your individual life or in a, you know, a society or in a, you know, the business field, of course you can see a different use cases of AI. So in nutshell, AI, AI is happening in your individual and in the society and as well as in the business areas everywhere. Yep. Okay, th thanks for that uh, uh, insight. Um, I have one more question, if you may. Um, autonomous car. I know we, we have some tests going on in the UK and, and the, these tests are going on in the US for some time. But do you think that the autonomous car will become mainstream in our day-to-day -day life? It's a good question. I would say it's again depends on how each one of you is dreaming about an autonomous car. So autonomous car is a dream. I would say answer is yes or no, because 
if you think about an autonomous car that means a car without a, a steering wheel without a brake uh, that can fly over you know on the traffic jam it, it could be a fantasy kind of stuff you know somebody is thinking about a auto autonomous car is like that in that case it's a long way for other ways if you think about a car you know which can in a, like a, a do a some or some of the autonomous driving in a controlled environment for example motorway uh, that very much possible now but most uh, challenging part is that how we can uh, run an autonomous car in the urban area of course if you if you drive in a car in a city environment we are facing a lot of issues for example we need to understand how many obstacles are going on on the road the pedestrians and the kids and there are a lot of signs the similar kind of challenges are going to happen in in the autonomous car research i would say you know that, that is gradually happening you know if you look on the autonomous car deployment you know autonomous car deplo deployment is grouping from a level 0 to level 5 autonomous i would say you know in the market currently we are in level 2 category most of the vehicle oems are researching towards making them vehicle capable to level 3 and level 4 autonomous that may happen in next 5 to 10 years but it will take time to do a complete autonomous car is that answer okay. question yeah it does thank you um any 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 further questions uh, for faisal uh, just uh, uh, to add on to that, you know, uh, again, you know, it, it, it really depends upon what you define by an autonomous car. I mean, if it is, the question is was whether it is here or not, I, I would say here, you might have seen <laughs> the, the car outside. Uh, the one I went to London yesterday morning, and I would say uh, my, uh, I was driving it myself probably about 20% of the time. The rest of the time, the car drove itself. And I have taken a video of that. Um, uh, let me just see. I can show you one second. Um, if I quickly, um, if I can. Um, let's create a ring. Yeah, while well, Salam is doing that, if people have any more questions, yeah. you can do it two ways. You can just raise your hand. Uh, on the on the chat uh, option and then we can uh, you can ask the questions if we have people have any more questions or you can type but i think if you want to ask questions please raise your hand and we can pick it up yeah Yeah, I think what Salam is showing is that, uh, you know, the Tesla autonomous car, I would say it's again depends on, you know, uh, it's a one of the autonomous feature, you know, for example, you know, the one of the autonomous features we are currently using our day to day life is called the adaptive cruise control and the land keep assist kind of features that is very much available in most of the, you know, the premium vehicle now. Uh, 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 Faisal, if you can explain what is level one zero to five, then people I think understand. Uh, yeah, so uh, basically level zero and level two or level one at two features, you know, for you know, it's already there. You know, our car is having a, a so many sensors fitted, for example, radar, camera. You know, it, j j just consider a car, you know, just as a human being. You know, in the car, now we have a you now how how uh, how a human being is seeing an object on the road by eye. Similarly, we have a cameras on the car. And uh, as well as, you know, the, we have a radar in the car. By using this kind of sensors, you know, uh, we can do, for example, um, emergency braking. If there is a car in front braking heavily, the car following that car can do emergency brake by using a, the, the radar, you know, based, you know, uh, object estimations. And as well as, you know, the, the car can, you know, recognize speed sign in the road, you know, as well as in the map. By using that one, based on that information, car can adopt a speed automatically. That's called speed limiter. And uh, as well as, you know, especially in the motorways, if you put our car on, you know, fully or ACC mode, that's called adaptive cruise mode, the car can follow a car in front, you know, uh, the what the speed is set by a driver, you know, uh, that means uh, driver don't want to, they can lift the, you know, their leg from the accelerator, the car can follow in front of the car. 
that's called acc features so these are the features you know the level 2 features that means this features are very much possible via supervised mode that means driver should you know keep his hand on the steering wheel and uh, you know the car can drive automatically but of course it's need a supervision you know uh, that's the level 2 features if you go to level 3 and level 4 it's a kind of a unsupervised you know the the mode the live driver can lift the you know the hands from the steering wheel a couple of times in, in level 3 features and especially level 4 and level 5 features, you know mode means you know uh, the the vehicle should you know can drive in the city environment with a fully unsupervised mode the most challenging part of you know uh, uh, you know in deploying this sort of technology is that technologies are there you know but of course there are a lot of liability in terms of if you fail for a, a, a single cases that make a lot of liability for the vehicle OEMs. That means it will take a time to test and make this system reliable uh, to the society. Uh, it will take a, a many, many years to go, especially for level five and level four autonomous driving. So what Salam has just shown is uh, Faisal, is it level three, isn't it? Um, I, three or two what i think it, what is you know shown is like a line keep assist isn't it yeah so i think it is a level of bit bit higher than one level three, I, uh, I would say it's a kind of features between level two and level yeah. three so yeah actually autonomous car means uh, fully autonomous means level five so what we have seen now is uh, Level, well, level three, uh, one or two steps from level, uh, level two. Hello, Mr. Hatim, can you mute? Please? I think it will be better. Hatim, can you mute, please? Everybody we have to mute everybody, then we will unmute all. That's the problem. Yeah, can you, Mr. Hatim, can you mute, mute, mute yourself, please? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah, so, so for a fully autonomous car, there is a long way to go. That's what Faisal, uh, Faisal said. What we have seen now in the market is maybe level two, so that you can see, or maybe very close to level three. So you can see how long we have to go uh, to reach a fully autonomous vehicle. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Nizar has got a, uh, he has raised his hand. I'm just going to unmute him. Uh, Mr. Nizar, Mr. Abdul Nizar. Asalaamu Alaikum. Uh, yeah, uh, I have one, one question about the autonomous car. So how far the infrastructure play the role? Because, okay, all the while we have been talking about the car itself, but the infrastructure, the road conditions and other, uh, you know, the traffic situations and all those aspects, how it has taken into account uh, while designing this, uh, this autonomous car? Okay, I can answer yeah, that question. And so Faisal, uh, let me put a disclaimer. That's my brother from, uh, from, from Riyadh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Th okay. Thanks. I can. I can take that question. Uh, infrastructure is going to play a bigger role in the autonomous car, especially for connecting an autonomous connecting a car into the infrastructure, especially for traffic light. I would say take an example. Uh, you know, uh, there is a, a feature called uh, a GLOSA that is called Green Light Optimal Speed Advisory. That means Nowadays, we have a, you know, the, the green, red, and uh, amber color in our traffic light, right? That means, normally, you know, what is happening today is that whenever you're approaching the traffic junctions, you have to understand what traffic light it is. Then either you have to stop there or you can pass over the tra traffic junctions, you know, uh, looking into the traffic light. Imagine there is a situation that you came to know about the traffic light face information one mile away from your vehicle. So that means vehicle can understand at what time your vehicle is going to be reached at that particular traffic point. Accordingly, the vehicle can adapt a speed in such a way that they can avoid a stopover at the traffic junction. Either the vehicle is going to say to the driver or it will increase your speed of the car to, uh, to avoid the stopover at that particular traffic junctions. That means, if the vehicle can get a, a infrastructure related information in HUD, they can make a, some decision in fast. Accordingly, they can adopt uh, you know, some decisions. That is one of the example. And uh, other example could be in near future, 
we can see that the vehicle can talk to other vehicle on the road. That's called V2X communications. That means, in a, as I said before, uh, at this point, we don't have a, any hearing capacity in our car. But of course, human can see each other by eye. They can listen to what other people are talking by ear. Similarly, we are going to fit a ear on the car by using a technology called V2X. That means whenever we have the technology in place, you know, car can see beyond the camera. You know, car can see beyond the wall, especially for if two car is coming to an intersection, imagine there is a big trees and you know, the, in the buildings in that intersection, the car can see what is really happening behind that building, if it is another coming, car is coming up. So according to that technology, you know, we can avoid a lot of accidents on the road. The car can understand, you know, they can talk each other, what speed they're coming, what they're doing on the road, if they're, making, if they're doing any handbrake. So based on this sort of technologies, you know, uh, a lot of accidents is going to be reduced on the road. So th there are a lot of, a lot of things are happening, you know, in this sort of areas, especially the, the communication from car and com communication to the cloud and communication to other infrastructure and the vehicle and make a lot of changes. It's going to be happening a lot of changes. You know, whenever we have the, you know, the smart cities of, uh, you know, all the infrastructure should be communicated into the car and especially in the parking areas, all the parking sensors, everything is going to be communicated to the car. Okay, thank you, Faisal. I think there are a few more questions. I think I can see one question here, which we, um, which was there for, about AI. I think it's for Salam and the, uh, the entire panel. Uh, I think all the panelists can answer. Why is there no uh, um, AI in India? There's no autopilot in India. We can't see Alexa in India. Salam, why can't an Indian have a lifestyle like you? That's the question. <laughs> Alexa, there is no, you know, there is, I don't think there is anything preventing Alexa to be in India. The only thing might be the, the internet connection because um, it can come and go. Uh, if for Alexa to work, it has to communicate. That machine is just, uh, uh, you know, just to pick up your noise. Uh, and it just got a mic and a speaker, that's all. It has to communicate with the server all the time. Okay, so if your internet connection is good, it's not going to work. Okay. Uh <laughs> But who said Alexa dot in India? Are you sure? Or I think it is available in India. I don't know. Is this a question here? I think it says reconnecting. Yeah. Somebody called reconnecting. And yeah. What was the second part? I mean, it's the same thing. Autopilot. Why is it not in India? <laughs> Autopilot, uh, you know, if, uh, as somebody said, uh, the, the, the condition of road is actually a big element. Because if you look at my video, it is kind of in this right in the middle of those two lines. And that two lines is actually it just got about you know uh, lots of cameras on the front so it kind of scans these lines all the time if that line in, in india people kind of move like that the driving is like that isn't it it's not straight line so that even if there is a line it's going to get um, you know worn out quite quickly if you don't have a you know those, those kind of lining so yes somebody asked infrastructure is a very um, you know, a very important aspect of uh, self-driving cars. So uh, if you don't have a, a you know, a, a line and if you, there's a big portals and people cutting left and right, it will be quite difficult. It doesn't mean actually it does, you can't drive it. It will be able to drive, but you know, uh, it, it would need your assistant as well, assistance as well. Uh, I don't think, you know, you can drive it just like I was driving in. Um, on yes, uh, add on to Salam explanations, I would say, the rules on the road is very critical for for the autonomous car yeah you know uh, of course especially in india we don't have any rules on the road of course we have a rules but it depends on how the people are obey that particular rules that make a lot of you know you know the the simplicity in challenges for deployment of a such vehicle on the road that exactly the challenges in the autonomous area also you know how we can build an autonomous car with and without rules on the road if you have a strict rules on the road, of course, it's very easy. Okay. Um, thank you. I think we just got a message saying one of the participants said they have auto, they have Alexa at home in, in Kerala. There we are. So there is